Hey guys how are you all? Welcome back to my channel. Today we will see what if Naruto neglected and was the true child of prophecy. If you enjoy then please like share and do comments. Taking care of children has been easier since there were many who aided Minato and Kashina. The Yandaimi had told his wife about the prophecy and agreed that they had to give their baby girl, their little Noriko, extra attention and training. They loved both children just the same in the eyes of the people but it was not hidden within the family who really was more cared for. At the age of four, little Naruto had already figured out that his sister was more lavished and more loved than he. And as much as Naruto wanted to complain about it, he did no such thing. Growing up with Noriko had been a challenge for him. By three, he asked to be moved to the attic which Naruto had turned into a bedroom with a library within it. It was more of a library than a bedroom. He rarely came down and his parents rarely called on him when he had moved up and shut himself from them. The only ones who cared for him were Uchiha Itachi, his younger brother, Sasuke, Aburame Shino, Narashikamaru, Hitaki Kakashi, Azuki Yugo, Morino Ibiki, Mitarashi Anko, Maida Gai, and Amino Aruka. Sasuke didn't like Noriko because she was friends with Yamanaka Ino and Haruno Sakura and all three girls were fangirls. He hated them with a passion. Shikamaru liked Naruto because they played shogi together and would beat Shikamaru 5 out of 10 matches. Shino liked Naruto because the blonde boy had not shunned him for his bugs or for not having eyeballs as the twin sister had phrased it. Naruto even went as far as defending Shino to Noriko who had huffed and left them alone instantly while muttering that losers will attract losers. Shino knew, as well as Shikamaru and Sasuke, that Naruto was far stronger, greater, and intelligent than he showed. Naruto was the exact opposite of Noriko. Intelligent, patient, observant, cunning, a fast learner, a natural sensor, and an elemental that could bend all elements with his mere will. Noriko was a loud mouth, brash dead last of the class, rambunctious, and knew nothing but pranking, gossiping, and stalking. In class, Naruto was always flanked by Sasuke on his right, Shikamaru on his left, and Shino guarded their backs. Sasuke and Shino both clicked because they hardly spoke and if they did, it was about techniques and training. Shikamaru was the tactician of the group, lazy but with a high IQ like Naruto. Both played shoji ever afternoon and Naruto would challenge Shikamaru's mind with shoji, beating the other every other game. Shino was their tracker and with his bugs, nothing got 15 feet near them without Shino knowing. Even if Naruto was a sensor with a range of 50 feet radius, it didn't keep Shino from doing his share for the group. Sasuke was their kinjutsu and ninjutsu specialist. He had an affinity to lightning and fire that he used from time to time when he was sparring with Naruto who could bend anything and everything around him. Naruto was the leader of their group. It did not need to be said but many of the others knew of this fact. The younger twin was far more talents and intelligent than the older twin yet the children did not understand why it was the girl who was more praised than Naruto. They all remembered the sparring contest where the twins were facing each other. Naruto had simply used taijutsu and slammed Noriko to a tree, cracking the tree with sheer force. Yet the Yandaimi and his wife fussed over the girl more, telling Naruto softly to be more gentle with his sister. The cold and expressionless look Naruto threw his so-called parents made the children shiver in fright. Since then, they stayed away from Naruto's group and made sure to never side with his sister as well. Not long after the contest, Namikaze Noriko had teamed up with Yamanaka Ino, Haruno Sakura, and shockingly, Inazuka Kiba. The rest of the class knew why the Inazuka hated Naruto. It was simple, Naruto was also everything Kiba was not. Kiba was just like Noriko so it did not surprise them long and brushed it off as nothing of importance. Two classes had then clashed one day in the playground and Hayuga Neji ended up crucified to a nearby tree when he decided to challenge Naruto to a spar. The teachers who watched were scared for the Hayuga when they saw the Namikaze boy's eyes turn freezing cold as he stood up. The match was one-sided and didn't even last five minutes. The Hayuga was taken to the hospital instantly as Naruto somehow used a Hayuga paralyzing technique on Neji before crucifying him. The next week when Neji got out, he was seen with Naruto's group and has stuck to them like glue. Neji was another challenger that Naruto and Shikamaru welcomed when it came to Shoji. Sasuke when it came to trainings, 
and Shino when it came to history and theoretical thinking and deducing. On the twins' seventh birthday, the couple had taken Nariko out to celebrate, completely forgetting Naruto who watched them from his window as they left the mansion gates. He narrowed his eyes and went to his father's study, making sure to keep his chakra to a zero to leave no traces of him being there. He knew where his father kept the forbidden scroll and he made a copy of its contents before retreating back to his domain, only to find Uchiha Itachi, Morino Ibiki, Mitarashi Anko, and Hitaki Kakashi waiting for him. Happy birthday, Naruto. Guy hasn't returned from his mission but he already gave me his gift for you just in case he didn't make it back in time. And Aruka is in town too. He's in charge of some booth that was set up by the academy officials. He sends his gift along as well. Kakashi greeted with his cheerful tone. Happy birthday, Gaki. Yugo chan is on patrol right now but she sends her greetings and her gift. Anko beamed at the blonde child, showing the two wrapped gifts that was from her and Yugo. Happy birthday, Naruto-kun. Ibiki spoke as well. Happy birthday, Ruto-kun. Sasuke wanted to come but mother made him come with her to town. Shino-kun and Shikamaru-kun are in town as well. And Neji-kun is guarding Hayuga Hanada as the Hayuga clan roamed the village. They all asked us to give you their gifts and that they will see you tomorrow in school. Itachi explained as he placed the wrapped gifts on the table in Naruto's library room. Kakashi brought cake. Anko brought three bottles of apple juice that Naruto loved and Ibiki brought a bag of Naruto's favorite candy from Tsukigakure. The celebrant gave them a rare smile that they had seen only a handful of times ever since they had known the child. Naruto just never really smiled at all. And even if the others couldn't be there, he knew they wished they were and that was enough for Naruto. They made him blow the candles and they ate a few pieces before they had to return for their evening patrol duty. Naruto thanked them and gave them a rare hug for their time and presence in his life. It was one of those treasures that both ANBUs and the Tokubetsu Junins slash T and I top interrogators kept close to their hearts. Naruto placed the cake back into its box and went down to the kitchen to place it inside the fridge so it didn't spoil. He returned to his room and began to learn the techniques that he had copied. He was a seal master despite his age. Naruto could rival his father without breaking a sweat and he himself had already created multiple seals that he used on a daily basis, right under his family's nose. The next day, Naruto entered the kitchen where his family had gathered. Nariko was about to slice the cake that was not for her when Naruto froze her where she stood. If you don't know how to read, the cake has my name on it. What gave you the right to touch what does not belong to you? Naruto asked coldly as he slid the cake away from his sister. Minato and Kashina looked deeply ashamed when they saw the words, Happy Birthday Naruto, on the cake. They had totally forgotten about him yesterday. N Naruto? Kashina called out but stopped when her son sent her a cold look. If you are going to apologize for forgetting about me yesterday, do not bother. You never remembered me since I turned three. What makes this year any different? Don't answer. I already know even if you don't say it. He remarked and closed the box and left the kitchen and the house altogether. Nariko fell on the floor and whined that Naruto be punished for freezing her. Minato and Kashina didn't hear it because they both were still in shock as their own son felt more like strangers than family. Minato tried to get into Naruto's room and was stunned to see how much books his child had. There was a bed near the window, a study table next to it, a table to eat, whenever he didn't join them downstairs and the rest were shelves and shelves of books. He roamed about and noticed that his son had books that didn't even seem like it came from the fire country. There were three shelves of scrolls near the window at the other side of the attic. Naruto had somehow torn the walls down to make use of the whole area and not just a side of it. When Minato tried to take a scroll a lightning zapped him and he instantly pulled his hand back. He took a strand of hair and threw it forward only to watch it get fried to ashes. He went back to the study table and saw a large cork board in front. It had a few photos on it and an album was on the side. He was glad that the table wasn't rigged like the shelves. He pulled out the album and saw photos upon photos were inside, and there was no trace of him, Kashina, and Nariko at all. There were photos of Naruto sleeping with Uchiha Sasuke, one where Naruto was playing Shoji with the Nara air. On another page was of Naruto with the Abarame air, 
It showed his child was being shown a bug that Naruto was holding on his palm and the other photo was of his son and the Hyuga child sparring in some training field Minato recognized somehow but couldn't pinpoint which. As Minato flipped more pages, he was starting to feel worse when he saw that his boy had photos with his shinobis and as far as Minato could see, they knew his son better than he did. On one side, Kakashi and Naruto were both wearing face masks that hid the lower part of their faces while on the other side, the one with Ibiki, both with the same blank bandana that Ibiki used to cover his head. On the next page, Guy and Naruto wearing green spandex and posing around like Guy did and on the other side of the album was one of Aruka and Naruto, with a book in front of them. Aruka looked like he was reading to Naruto. A few more pages and Minato saw one photo of Itachi was teaching Naruto how to hold a kanai and another photo showing Naruto and Azuki Yugo having cake with Gekko Hayate. Near the end, even Anko had a photo with Naruto and both were wearing a trench coat that Anko always wore, and yet not a single one of them with the family. Minato returned the album back to its place and left his child's room, looking dark with shame, self-disappointment, and self-loathing. Kashina had just waved their daughter goodbye when she saw Minato enter the living room and looking like he had killed someone he knew. Minato, is something wrong? She asked as she sat next to her husband. The young daimi couldn't bring himself to look at his wife. Do you know that we don't photos of Naruto as he grew up? He asked her rhetorically. Kashina frowned. Don't be silly, of course we have photos of Naruto growing up. She said as she stood up and went to the shelf to fetch the photo album they had. Minato didn't say anything as he just waited for his wife to realize that he was right. He watched with a heavy heart as Kashina flipped from page to page, slowly at first before she began to quicken the pace, reaching the end of the album. Suddenly, Kashina felt her hands lost its strength, dropping the album on the floor and stumbling back to the armchair was that behind her. We don't have any photos of Naruto growing up, it's all Noriko? Just Noriko. Kashina whispered as she tried to gather himself and not break down into pieces. Minato didn't have the strength to move and comfort his wife as he himself was too busy trying to find any memory of him spending time with Naruto. He got more and more frustrated as he thought and dug deeper into his mind. Nothing, not one single memory, what else didn't they know about their own son? Men never do good unless necessity drives them to it. But when they are free to choose and can do just as they please, confusion and disorder become rampant. Tilda Machiavelli, Niccolo. Discourses on Livy.1517. Uruka had sighed as he looked at the faces of the students. Sasuke, Shino, and Shikamaru looked closed off since Naruto had passed the Genin exams after his sixth birthday. He was proud that Naruto came to him and asked if he could take the text with Neji and it made the Chunin happier when his precious boy passed on top of the class. He missed his Naruto and it seemed that his friends missed him too. Noriko was just as noisy as ever and it silently shocked him that the girl didn't even notice that her twin brother was no longer there at first. When she did, she proclaimed loudly how she felt happy that he wasn't there to embarrass her. Uruka knew he shouldn't have thought of it, but it couldn't be helped. He thought that it should have been the other way around. It should be that Naruto be embarrassed to have a sister like her. Shikamaru was no longer the dead last and did more in class as he remembered that Naruto made the Nara promise to do his best. Shino and Sasuke did their bests as well and no one had ever penetrated their circle ever since Naruto had graduated. Sasuke had not even complained and knew that Naruto was far more superior than he was but Naruto glared at him and said that he was just studious. Sasuke snorted at him but just smirked and nodded after congratulating his best friend. As far as he knew, Naruto was apprenticing with Morino Ibiki of the T&I department. How that got past the Hokage, Uruka didn't bother to ponder. The Yandaimi Hokage, despite being a good leader and a strong presence to the village, was not as observant as he showed. He saw once when he was temporarily the Yandaimi's secretary for a week when the original had called in sick one day, how the man went through paperwork. He didn't really read them thoroughly as he should and was told to read the papers and stack them according to its importance. Kakashi told him how the secretary liked Naruto and placed Ibiki's request to have Naruto as his apprentice on the top so that the Yandaimi would just stamp and sign it without reading it. Uruka was also told how Ibiki got to have Naruto as his apprentice when Anko, Hayate, Yugo, and even Itachi and Kakashi themselves wanted Naruto as their apprentices. 
Kakashi and Itachi wanted Naruto on the fast track to become Anbu along with Yugo and Hayate. It was a series of bets that eventually Ibiki had won and thus having Naruto as his apprentice and the rest groaned. Uruka had chalked on it at first but his one week proved how irresponsible Namikaze Minato could be, especially when his daughter came to the tower. Not a year later, Chigusa slipped again and the Yandaimi had approved Ibiki's request of allowing Naruto to take the Chunin exams at Kusagakure. It pained Uruka that his family didn't even notice that he wasn't around for nearly two whole months. Naruto had passed and six months later, Uruka himself helped slip the request for Naruto to take the Junin exams. And again, Naruto had made them all proud to come out as the top contender. All the while, his blood family missing all his accomplishments because they were comforting their daughter who had little to nearly zero ability and talent. Almost five years later, Uruka had filed the papers of those who passed the academy and was now waiting for the Yandaimi to separate them into teams. Sasuke, Shino, and Shikamaru had earned the top three spots with Sakura placing fourth. It did not shock Uruka when he came by Nariko's name, placing in last yet passing the tests and making Genin. He was about to enter the Hokage's office when the Junins called out to him. Yo Uruka, Kakashi greeted him and he smiled back. Kakashi, team placements again? Are you going to pass this team or fail them again? He joked and a few chuckled when Kakashi smirked from under his mask. It depends on who will be the members of the team and if they pass my test. He answered, Asuma, Kuranai, Gai, Genma, Hayate, Kakashi, and Uruka entered the office and the Junin sat before the Hokage while Uruka was standing by the Yandaimi, his clipboard ready in hand. Alright, I have sorted out the students who passed and picked who will be the team sensei will be. Team 10 or the Ino Shika Cho team is composed of Yamanaka Ino, Nara Shikamaru, and Akamichi Cho. Asuma, I want you to handle them. If the Nara is as great as his father, he will be a challenge for you. Minato began. Kakashi, Uruka, Gai, Genma, and Hayate discreetly raised their brows when Shikamaru was mentioned. Of course the boy was going to be greater than his father. They had been there when Naruto made the Nara promise to be greater than Nara Shikaku ever had been. Next, Team 11. Hayuga Neji, Rock Lee, and Amamori Tenten. Guy, Rock Lee is a taijutsu specialist such as yourself. Hayuga Neji is a genius as well. The girl is a weapon specialist. I'm sure you'll be able to handle them. Minato addressed the spandex wearing Junin. Kakashi instantly gagged Guy who was about to yell something and the rest of the people sighed in relief. Moving on, Kuranai, I want you as Team 8 Zajunin Sensei. You have Hayuga Hinata. Aburame Shino, and Inazuka Kiba. Minato said, taking note the stiffened expressions his Junins showed. Is something wrong? Kurinai asked the others and the Junins turned to Uruka to explain it to her. Kurinai san, Inazuka Kiba and Aburame Shino are not on the best of terms. Though Shino will not outright retaliate if Kiba attacked or yell, it has been noted that Kiba had been beaten by Shino time after time during their academy days. You will be playing peacemaker as Hayuga Hinata is right out shy and a wallflower. Uruka told her and the other nodded. Thank you for the information, Amino-san. I will do well to remember it. She thanked him and bowed as Uruka bowed back. Now that we covered that, this year we have more girls than boys so, Team 7 will have two females and one male. Haruno Sakura, Uchiha Sasuke, and Namikaze Noriko. Kakashi, I want you as their Junin. When Sasuke activates his Sharingan, you will be able to help him along with his clan to control it. He said as he thought of Itachi not being able to do it since the young man was off on assignments most of the time. Hayate and Genma were relieved that they didn't have to have teams this time as their own had already moved up to Chunin's. Kakashi, Uruka, and Gai, however, looked a bit troubled. What's wrong this time, Kakashi? Asuma spoke up. The group stared at Kakashi who stared at the Yandaimi. Uchiha Sasuke will kill you when he finds out that you placed him with Haruno and your stalker of a daughter. Kakashi flat out told the Hokage who looked shocked. He knew his daughter fancied the younger Uchiha heir but he didn't know that she was stalker the poor boy. The Yandaimi pondered for a bit and frowned further. Is something wrong, Hokage-sama? Hayate inquired for the whole group. As far as I remember, my son Naruto was in the same class as Nariko, Aburame Shino, Nara Shikamaru, 
and Uchiha Sasuke. But I did not see his name on the list of those that graduated this year. Amino kun, did he fail? Minato asked and the other, Sans Kuranai and Asuma gasp in shock. Of course not, Hokage sama. The reason why Naruto kun is not on this list is because he already had graduated long before. He had not been placed into a team because he was taken as an apprentice immediately. Aruka informed the man pride in his tone. However, Minato was shocked as he was listening. Naruto had graduated already? When? Who had requested him as an apprentice? And why did he not notice? When did Naruto graduate, Amino-kun? Minato inquired. He graduated just after his he turned six, Hokage-sama. Then Morino Ibiki had requested him as an apprentice. Not a year later, he moved up to Chunin as he had been the only one who had remained during the Kusagakure Chunin exams. And six months later, he had moved up again and is now a Junin. Uruka said, successfully killing the smirk and appeared off as neutral and expressionless. Kakashi, Gai, Genma, and Hayate on the other hand were all smiles. What? You mean to say that my son has been a Junin for nearly five years and I am just hearing this now? Minato said as he broke out form his shock and disbelief. That can't be right, Hokage-sama. You yourself had approved of them, signed them, and all files had your stamp on it. It must have been during Chigusa-san's time when this all had happened since I was still a teacher's aide when Naruto had graduated the academy. Uruka said, mentally apologizing to Chigusa's soul. The woman had died during childbirth and with her child along. Her husband was a Junin who died three months later during his rounds near the Kirigakure border. The Junins watched as their Yandaimi Hokage tried to catch his breath. Namikaze Naruto, his son, was just about to turn 11 in three months. And yet he was already a Junin? How could he have missed it? There must have been some mistake. Amino kun, give me the files of Namikaze Naruto, please. He said calmly, and the Chunin left instantly. He shushined to the archives, grabbed the file, and returned to the office not three minutes later. Minato saw for himself the list of achievements his son had. 12 D ranks, 15 C ranks, 27 A ranks, and 10 S ranks. He shuffled through the file and saw Chunin exam report stating his son being the only one remaining, thus passing the test's hands down. On another paper, the Junin exams and the report that Naruto had excelled the exams and was the only one left like his Chunin exam. He dropped the papers on the table and looked totaled floored. Tenzo, bring Morino Ibiki and Namikaze Naruto here immediately. Minato commanded after what seemed like forever. The Junins shifted yet Uruka remained passive. He was cackling mentally as he had been there to support Naruto when he came home from the exams. He had been there when Naruto struggled to study and learn ninja techniques and elemental control. Uruka had been there when Naruto broke down after his first c rank mission where he had killed a bandit who attacked them. He, along with Anko, Ibiki, Kakashi, Yugo, Hayate, Gai, and Itachi, they'd been there for Naruto. Even Sasuke, Shino, and Shikamaru had comforted the blonde when he had broken down the second time after his first s rank mission that almost killed him. Ten minutes later, a knock on the door broke the silence of the office. Come in. Minato spoke out and his eyes widened in shock when his son, who now had the same hair length as himself, came in wearing a Junin vest and his Hidai 8 held his blonde hair back from his face that was half covered with a mask like Kakashi. However, what caught his attention most, was his son's freezing cold eyes. You called for us, Hokage-sama? Ibiki inquired as he stood next to Naruto. Ibiki, you requested for Naruto's apprenticeship, his pass for the Chunin exam, and Junin exams yes? Minato asked him back. Hi, Hokage-sama, I filed them all through all the channels and got them approved by you three days after. Is something wrong? Ibiki inquired once more. It was no secret to them that the Yandaimi overlooked Naruto. And now that this revelation had surfaced, the man was either in denial, going to yell for not being told, even if the files had his stamp and signature, or declare that Naruto was not fit for his rank. If that happened, Ibiki would resign as a shinobi immediately. Minato turned from the man to his son who stared at him with cold and expressionless eyes, making Minato shiver inside. Naruto, how come you never told us about you making Junin? Let alone passing the Genin exams and the Chunin exams? Minato asked with a pained expression. With all due respect, Hokage-sama, 
I did not see the need to tell you as you have approved of the requests. Surely you had read through them before signing them and placing your stamp on it as final approval. Naruto asked with the same cold voice and Minato knew that his son had more to say but didn't for some reason. May I inquire why you did not proceed to request to join Anbu? I would have had done such if the T&I department were not short on staff. With Ibiki-san and Enko-san alone, they have very little shinobis to work the department. Naruto answered once more and Minato sighed. Everyone except Naruto are dismissed. Team and Junin placements are done. Minato commanded and the other filed out. Kakashi, Hayate, Gai, Genma, Ibiki, and Aruka patted Naruto's head before leaving. When the door was closed, Minato sealed the room into silence. Naruto, why didn't Minato began but Naruto cut him off. I tell you, for what reason should I when you never showed any interest with whatever I did? You actually had your chance after my sixth birthday. I know you went to the attic and saw the photo album on my study table. But neither you nor your wife did anything to change our situation. Your daughter only got worse after and she had little to no intelligence and talent compared to me. Did you know that people often wondered how I am related to her when she cannot even be on the same level as I when it came to performance and talent? Naruto taunted his father who felt worse and worse as Naruto verbally slapped him with the truth. If you only cared to look, you would probably have noticed that you know nothing about me. It's your shinobis who have been there for me. Uruka sensei was the one who comforted me when I came back from my first c rank mission when I had my first kill. A group of bandits who were in the way as we passed by bird country. It was Itachi who taught me how to properly hold a kanai and shurikens. It was Hayate and Yugo who taught me how to use a sword and blades. Gai taught me taijutsu. Anko and Ibiki taught me ways to interrogate prisoners without having to even tough them. Did you know that Neji, Sasuke, Shino, and Shikamaru were the ones to hold me when I came back from my first S rank mission? I nearly died then when Ibiki and Hayate were surrounded and I was facing three nins who had a Kekai Jenke that we didn't read on the report. Naruto kept on telling him and Minato was already crying in silence as his mind processed how much he had missed in his son's life. Those people saw me at my best and worst. And all those times, you and your wife were doting on your daughter who would never amount to anything because she knows nothing and passing the academy was a mere fluke. She's the dead last of her batch while I topped mine. Naruto pointed one more time and took a deep breath. If there isn't anything else, I will return to my duty now, Hokage-sama. Naruto said and narrowed his eyes. Minato managed to shake his head and before he could even unseal the room, his son shattered the seal he placed and opened the door. Oh, by the way, I'm a seal master as well as an elementalist too. You should read my file as I am sure every ability I have is in there. I think I'm in the bingo book as well. He said as left the office and closed the door behind him. Minato stared at the space of his office then back to the door that his son just exited. It took nearly half an hour before Minato moved to read the file that was on his desk, and true enough, everything was there. Naruto excelled in Taijutsu, Genjutsu, Ninjutsu, and Kenjutsu. He was a seal master as well and from how he easily broke his seal, Minato was sure his son was on the same level, if not, better than him. Naruto's affinity were wind, water, earth, fire, and lightning. He would have felt so proud of all the achievements if he didn't feel horrible for abandoning his son when he needed him growing up. Lastly, Minato pulled out a copy of the bingo book and searched for his son's name. Bingo book entry number 100390. Name. Namikaze, Maelstrom, Naruto. Age. Unknown. Affiliation. Konoha. Rank. High Chunin to High Junin. Threat level. High A to low S level. Description. Long yellow hair, ice cold blue eyes, lower half of the face covered by a mask, around 5 feet in height, elementalist, can bend all 5 elements, he excels in taijutsu, genjutsu, ninjutsu, and kinjutsu. Killed 30 kirigakir nins, hunter and junins, and nearly a hundred otogakir nins, chunins, junins, and hunter nins. Bounty. 10 million ryo, kiri, auto. Condition. Approach with caution. To be brought back, dead or alive. Otto. To be brought back alive. Kiri. Minato closed the book and suddenly felt so tired like he had been running for months. 
Naruto's words and taunts about him not knowing anything about his own son came back to his mind. He could even hear his son's voice clearly. The whole afternoon was spent in his office, trying to mentally crucify himself, and repeating it inside his mind how much of a failure he was as a father to his one flesh and blood. He gathered the papers and left his office. It was better to show Kashina the file than explain. Minato didn't have the energy to even speak anymore. He just felt so tired and disappointed in himself for everything that he had not done for his son who was a splitting image of himself when he was that age. The trip home had taken forever and he saw the light up on his son's room and the silhouette that indicated that his son was indeed in his room, moving about. Couldn't face his son, not after what had happened in his office. Minato just didn't have the courage anymore and he was sure that Kashina would break open once more. As he entered their home, he could already hear his wife and daughter's voice. He stayed by the door, listening to his daughter tell his wife about what her day was like and what she had done. Nothing of importance from what Minato could gather. Gossiping with the Haruno and Yamanaka girls, looking at clothing shops and about Uchiha Sasuke. Something told Minato that placing his daughter in the same team as the boy was going to shorten his life in half. Did you know that people often wondered how I am related to her when she cannot even be on the same level as I when it came to performance and talent? Naruto's voice popped into his head once more which made Minato flinch in pain. He finally found the strength to move and enter the kitchen silently. He remembered yesterday evening when Nariko came home, yelling at the top of her lungs, that she had passed the academy test. If only he had not been so focused on her, he would have wondered why Naruto had not spoken to them about his passing. But then he mentally slumped on his mental floor that he had not spoken to his son since the day after the twins' sixth birthday where Naruto had frozen Noriko the moment he entered the kitchen and then unfrozen her when he had left the house. That should have been a sign for Minato but he didn't see it clearly back then. Before he could say anything, his wife and daughter saw him and stared worriedly at him. Minato? Kashina called out. Something wrong, daddy? Noriko asked as she got down from the stool and walked up to him. Can you go up to your room while mommy and I have a talk, princess? Minato requested with a deep sigh. Noriko didn't understand but nodded and left the kitchen but didn't go to her room as she was told. She hid just by the door and waited to hear what they would have talked about. Much to her annoyance, her dad sealed the kitchen and now she couldn't hear anything at all. And Noriko was sure as hell that the kitchen was sealed closed so no one could get in or out. Inside, Minato silently handed Kashina the folder of their son and sat down at the head of the table. He waited for her reaction and just sat there as Kashina, once again, broke into shock, disbelief, and tears. He was contemplating how much they had missed while their son had grown up. They weren't there to congratulate him for passing the academy. They weren't there when he passed the Chunin and Junin exams. They weren't there to praise him for his abilities and skills. They weren't there to comfort him after his first kill on duty. They weren't there to comfort him when he nearly died in the line of duty. And Minato should have known about it if he only read the reports thoroughly like he should have. He relied far too much on the spoken reports that he dismissed the written ones after his shinobis leave his office. How could we have not been able to see all these, Minato? Kashina said in between her sobs. Minato did not answer. He couldn't since he didn't know what to tell her. So many questions ran through his mind that very moment. His son had faced him earlier with so much distance. Naruto had stood before him as nothing more than a junin of Konoha before his Hokage. He now tried to remember when the last time his son ever called him Daddy or Kashina, Mommy. When was the last time they ate dinner together? When was the last time Naruto asked him for anything? When was the last time Naruto even told them how his day was? But for Minato, the most important question for him as a father was when was it he last saw his son smile at him? Minato, is there a way to fix this? Our son, Kashina was cut off and Minato brought out of his thoughts when a presence entered the kitchen without the ceiling breaking. You lost your son five years ago. I am here to simply inform you that I am moving out of this house. I have finished packing my books and will be leaving now. Naruto told them coldly and turned to leave. Minato broke the seal and followed his son out with Kashina right behind him. He saw his daughter gaping as she stared at her twin brother who was wearing his Junin vest and his Hidai 8 and had a box with him. Naruto, please don't leave. Give us a chance to fix whatever we need to. Kashina pleaded as he held on to her son's arm, stopping him from leaving. Naruto turned to look at her dead in the eyes. 
You don't even know what you need to fix. Besides, I already said you lost your son five years ago. There is nothing left for you to fix. Why don't you just dote on your daughter like you've been doing all these years? If you want, I'll even request for my name to be changed. That way, officially, you will no longer have a son. You never did remember you had one, this will just make it official. Naruto told her with a smirk that made even Minato shiver. Kashina was crying as Naruto pulled his arm away from her. Minato was beating his brain to say something. His 10-year-old son was moving out. Junin Namikaze Naruto. As your Yandaimi Hokage, I command you to stop. Minato yelled which made Naruto turn and glare at him. You dare stoop so low as to use your position to stop me? Well, I shouldn't be surprised since that's the only thing you are to me. You are my Hokage and nothing more. He taunted Minato who looked ashamed now. Naruto turned to face the man, totally ignoring Kashina who was crying by his side. As you command, Yandaimi-sama, what can I do for you? Naruto inquired as he placed down his box and fell on one knee as the Anbum, Junin, and Chunin's did. Minato was trying his best not to shatter as he stared his son who was now on bended knee. Naruto was right. Minato was nothing more than his Hokage. Stay. I command you to stay. That is an order. Minato said as he swallowed hard, nothing knowing what else he was left to do. Naruto stayed still for a while then spoke with the coldness tone Minato had ever heard his whole life. As your will, Yandaimi Hokage-sama. Naruto stood up, grabbed his box and returned to the attic that was once more his room, leaving a speechless Noriko, a crying Kashina, and a tired Minato on his wake. Men judge generally more by the eye than by the hand, for everyone can see and few can feel. Everyone sees what you appear to be, few really know what you are. Tilda Machiavelli, Niccolo, the Prince.1513. That evening was spent in silence. Minato ordered Naruto to have dinner with them. His son came down with his vest and his hidai aid on his head and his mask still up. Now that he faced his son, he wondered when his son started to wear the mask like Kakashi. Kashina wanted to make all of Naruto's favorites but when she got to the kitchen, she realized that she didn't know what her son's favorites were. Thinking further, she also came to be slapped by reality that she didn't even know anything about her son. What was his favorite color? Did he like any particular sweet? What did he like best? Orange juice or milk? It made her depressed further when more and more questions came up and she had no answer to even one. Noriko had not said anything. She had watched her brother attempt to leave the house but was stopped by their dad who commanded him to stay. What was happening? And what was in that file that had been on the floor before her daddy gathered them up? She couldn't see anything or even manage to read one page. And why was Naruto wearing a Junin vest and a Hidai 8? She had thought he had dropped out of school when he had stopped attending class after their sixth birthday. But lo and behold, he was wearing a damn Junin vest. When they were called for dinner, Noriko heard her daddy order her brother to have dinner with them and he came down wearing his vest, his hidai ate, and a mask. Since when did he wear one? When they all had sat down, the dining room was filled with tension but to Noriko, her brother looked detached. Let's eat, Minato said softly, breaking the silence of the room. Naruto, would you like to try the fish curry? Kashina asked. I'm allergic to seafood, was his answer and Kashina gasped. Oh, I am so sorry, Naruto. I didn't know. Um, how about the chicken roll then? She said, trying not to cry once more while passing the plate to her son who silent accepted it. Minato swallowed hard. He couldn't eat seafood as well since he would bloat up and redden. So, his son was allergic like him. He inwardly smiled a little. Noriko was trying not to burst and remained silent as she glanced at her brother who seemed more of a stranger to her than her twin. Aren't you going to drop the mask? How will you eat? She asked but got a raised brow in return. Naruto raised his chopsticks and ate as if the mask was not there at all. Noriko's eyes widened in shock. How was her brother doing that? Minato and Kashina were all too familiar with it since Kakashi was just like Naruto. When did you start wearing a mox? Noriko asked again. After my first A-rank where Hunter Nins from Kiri heard of Ibiki Sensei and Anko Sensei's apprentice that just turned Junin. He answered her which shocked Noriko. Her brother was indeed a Junin and had gone to a rank missions already. Since when were you a Junin? Noriko was losing her temper. Since I turned 7th, I passed the academy when I was 6. 
passed the Chunin exams after I turned seven then Junin six months later. He answered her, dismissing her rising temper. Minato and Kashina were mentally taking notes of their son's answers. What? How can that be? You dropped out. You stopped going to school. Nariko finally burst. Dropped out? I stopped attending the academy since I already passed the academy tests. Morino Ibiki of the T&I department had requested for my apprenticeship and trained me single-handedly. He then requested for me to take the Chunin exams then the Junin exams six months after I had passed the Chunin exams. You would have known that if you weren't so busy stalking Sasuke, gossiping with the mind invader and the abnormally pink-haired girl with a large forehead and SPD. Naruto told her coldly, extinguishing her temper instantly as he glared his ice-cold eyes at her. Nariko had never seen her brother angry before. Heck, she had never seen him since he had left the academy. And to think that they lived in one house. Then Naruto's words came back to her. I do not stalk Sasuke-kun. And don't call Ino and Sakura weird names. She yelled at him but he merely raised a brow at her. You do and you know it. Inu, Weasel, and Karasu knows you stalk him. The Yamanaka are mind invaders as they can enter the enemy's minds during interrogation. And Haruno has an abnormally large forehead and has SPD. If you would ask you mind invader to enter Haruno's mind, you will find out that I am telling you the truth. He told her and she turned red in the face. The Anbu knew? Whatever do they know? And what the hell was SPD? Minato and Kashina would have laughed at this banter if the situation was lighter. And seeing that look on your face shows you know nothing. SPD stands for Split Personality Disorder. So far from observations that I have seen whenever I see you three, she doesn't have MPD which is far harder to cure. And in case you didn't know what MPD meant as well, it means Multiple Personality Disorder. Naruto told her passively which was annoying Nariko so much. Nariko was looking more like an idiot in front of their parents the more she questioned her brother. She didn't know if it would be a good or a bad thing to keep interrogating him. But her curiosity got the better of her. What were on the files that daddy brought home and showed mommy? Nariko asked and the whole table froze. Naruto eyed Nariko before turning to the couple who stared at their daughter. I am not sure, either that was my file folder containing everything about me or something else. Why don't you ask the Hokage himself? Naruto challenged her and knew that she would fall for it. Daddy, what was on those papers? Nariko asked and Naruto smirked behind his mask and resumed eating. Well um, you see Nariko? Those papers were. Minato began to sweat. How was he going to tell his daughter that it was her brother's folder file about all his achievements, mission lists, abilities, and skills? Naruto on the other hand, was amused to see the man squirm under a simple question. Did Minato fear his daughter's reaction when she found out how different they really were and that Nariko would finally see that she was nothing compared to him? Whatever the reason, Naruto didn't really care. Nariko, it's about Naruto's prior missions and reports. Minato said in a low voice. Nariko looked confused. If they were mission reports, why did their daddy have to show their mommy? Nariko would have pressed on if the knock didn't interrupt them. Kashina instantly stood up and ran to the door to see who it was and wonder why someone would come to their home this late. She opened the door to see Kakashi, Uruka, and Ibiki standing outside their door. Oh Kakashi-kun, Ibiki-san, Amino-kun, what can I do for you three? She asked them. Good evening, Kashina-sama. We were just wondering if Naruto is here. He was supposed to meet up with us two hours ago. Ibiki spoke for the group and before she could say anything, Naruto came and spoke. Gomenase Ibiki Taicho, Kakashi Senpei, Uruka Senpei. The Yandaimi ordered me to stay as I was about to leave. I had forgotten to send a missive to inform you that I can no longer move to live with you Uruka Senpei. Naruto said as he bowed. Kashina was surprised at this. Naruto was going to move in with Uruka? Again, before she could say anything. Minato came to the door this time. Good evening, Hokage-sama. Our deepest apologies for disturbing your evening meal. We were just worried when Naruto-kun didn't show up earlier. Uruka spoke this time. Minato looked torn in between angry and hurt. Angry because he had heard that his son was moving in with his secretary and hurt that his son chose to leave them. My son will not be moving out as he doesn't have the need to. He is still 10 years old as it is. Minato's lame excuse rose up. My apologies, Yandaimi-sama, 
However, may I remind you that I am considered an adult as it is since I am a Junin and have been for the last four years? I could have moved out long ago and you would not have noticed at all had I not told you earlier. Naruto bluntly pointed out and Kashina chalked and swallowed her sob. She didn't want to cry in front of these men. Ibiki shifted and nodded. Then we shall take our leave, Hokage-sama. Ibiki said then turned to Naruto. We shall see you tomorrow then, Naruto-kun. Hi, Ibiki Taicho. Naruto replied and nodded to Kakashi and Uruka who followed Ibiki down the path and out the Namikaze compound. The three went back inside and Naruto was heading back to his room when Kashina called out to him. Naruto, would you really have moved out and leave your family if your father had not ordered you to? Kashina asked, hoping he would say something to calm her down however the look on his face and the coldness of his eyes spoke differently. Family, we are no such thing. However, he is my Hokage. I would not dare disobey his order. Good evening to you both, Hokage-sama. Kashina-sama. He answered and left, hearing the woman who was once his mother fall on the floor and cry once more. He did not see the man who was once his father cry in silence as both watched him walk away from them, realizing that what he said was right, they were not a family. They never had been a family to him. Many citizens are found, who, envying the reputation these men have justly earned, seek to be regarded not merely as their equals but as their superiors. Tilda Niccolo Machiavelli, The Discourses. 3, 16. Noriko was moody as she entered the classroom where they were told to stay in for team placement. Not 24 hours ago did she find out that her twin brother was not a dropout like she had thought and spoke but was actually a Junin. She was far too preoccupied with his thoughts that she didn't even notice that she was being called by her friends. Noriko, you look like you didn't get any sleep at all. I know you're excited but looking like a zombie won't impress Sasuke-kun. Ino pointed out teasingly while Sakura giggled. Noriko turned to them for a few moments then sighed as she pushed open the door to the classroom and entered. The first thing she saw was Sasuke, Shino, Shikamaru, and Neji sitting together, like always when the four were together in the schoolyard. Shikamaru was talking to Neji about something while Sasuke was watching Shino command his bugs to do something. Sasuke looked impressed and told Shino something and the boy nodded back. This made Noriko wonder if they knew about Naruto and his Junin status or not. Then for some odd reason, all four stopped talking and turned to look at her. She felt a shiver run down her spine and looked embarrassed when Sasuke and Neji smirked at her. Why are they looking at you like that? asked Sakura who poked Noriko. How should I know? Noriko replied and moved to sit down on the table in front of the boys with Sakura and Ino by her side. The other two girls kept giggling while Noriko was in deep thought, wondering if she would ask them or not. Eventually, curiosity got the best of her and she turned to see the four looking straight at her. You couldn't be any more obvious than you are now, Namikaze. Sasuke taunted her and smirked. And as for your unspoken question, the answer is yes. We are his best friends. Did you really think that we didn't know? Neji told her with a condescending tone that made her blush due to embarrassment. Sakura and Ino was confused but before either girl could ask, the classroom door opened and came the source of her current mood and frustration, her twin brother. Drop out? What are you doing here? And why do you have that Junin vest? Don't tell me you stole that? Kiba taunted the moment Naruto walked in. Naruto raised a brow at him and ignored him altogether. Good morning. Uruka Senpei couldn't be here to read announce your team placements as he is currently aiding the Yandaimi Hokage with a matter. And if any of you are wondering where your Mizuki Sensei is, his body is being examined by the medical nens and the T and I for information. He had attempted to steal the Forbidden Scroll last night but was captured and killed by Anbo. Naruto informed them which silenced the whole room. Now, for team placements, I will read the listed teams, its members and your Junin Sensei. Starting with Team 11, Amamori Tenten, Hayuga Neji, and Rock Lee. Your Junin Sensei will be made a guy, Naruto said with a smirk and Neji groaned, slamming his head on the table in front of him. Next, Team 10, Yamanaka Ino, Narashikamaru, and Akamichi Choji, the newest Ino Shikacho team. Your Junin Sensei will be Serutobi Asuma. Naruto continued and Shikamaru groaned as well. He knew it was going to be them but still, a small hope had appeared before when he had topped the exams. Team 8. Inazuka Kiba, 
Hayuga Hinata, and Abarame Shino. Your Junin sensei is Yuhi Kuranai, Naruto said as he saw Shino and his bugs come out from his coat. His friend was not pleased at all. Genin Abarame, control your bugs. If you wish to file a complaint, do so at the tower. Naruto told him and Shino nodded. Kiba raised a brow when Naruto addressed Shino as Genin. Hey drop out, why did you address Shino as Genin Abarame? You sound like you have authority drop out. Kiba's huge mouth was going to get him into trouble. Besides, you can't possibly be any better than me or your sister. We graduated while you stopped. Kiba went on and didn't see the smirk that was on the faces of Naruto's face. But Nariko saw it and she was worried that her brother would punish Kiba for running his mouth off. Kiba, shut up before you say too much. Nariko said which made the room look at her, including an amused Naruto. What's Dropout going to do? He can't harm me. I'm a Genin now. Kiba said confidently which made Nariko groan. Genin Inazuka, you better do as you are being warned by Genin Namikaze. Or you might just find yourself inside the T&I interrogation and torture chamber. Naruto warned him coldly which made Akamaru run to Naruto and whine for his master's stupidity. Naruto looked down at Akamaru and scooped him up. I have warned him already, Akamaru. If he mouths off once more, I have to pull rank and have him disciplined to make sure he learns. Naruto told Akamaru who barked and turned to growl at Kiba. Shut the fuck up before you get yourself killed. I won't even fight for you if you keep on mouthing off to him. Akamaru barked at Kiba who looked confused and a bit angry that his own companion was betraying him. What the hell Akamaru, why are you worried, as if drop out can do anything to me. Kiba opened his trap once more and missed the groan from Nariko and the smirks from Naruto's friends. Three hand seals and Kiba was bound instantly where he sat. His eyes widened in horror as he found himself unable to move. I told you to shut the fuck up, didn't I? Akamaru barked worriedly as he watched Kiba struggle to free himself. Nariko was now sure that Naruto would not let Kiba's insubordination pass by as he had already been warned to stop. Dog breath. Apologize to him before he takes you to the T&I. Nariko yelled as Kiba's head turned to look at her. Just do it, please. Nariko begged, knowing that if Naruto could have broken their parents, Kiba would not last five minutes under him. Why the fuck would I do that? Kiba yelled back angrily. He didn't why Nariko and Akamaru were acting weird but he didn't like it at all. God damn it Inazuka, if you don't want to be permanently, Nariko's rant was cut off when the door opened to reveal Serutobi Asuma. Oh Junin Namikaze, you're still here? Are the team placement done yet or was I a bit too early? Asuma asked with an embarrassed look. Asuma Senpei, I was about to read the last team when Genin Inazuka kept interrupting me which then escalated to him questioning and insulting my person. I had bound him and was about to proceed when Genin Namikaze and Akamaru begged for Genin Inazuka's release. Then you came in. Naruto told him which made the older Junin turn to look narrow his eyes at the bound boy whose eyes widened in shock. To Kiba, he was wondering if he had heard wrong. Did the man really address Naruto as Junin? Was that why Akamaru and Nariko were worried? But before he could speak up, the man was pushed into the room by a female with black hair and red eyes. Good morning, Kurunai Senpei. Here to fetch your team? Naruto inquired and the woman smiled at him, nodding her answering. Team placement is nearly over. I just have to read the last team and you may take your team then. However, I must stress it out that one of your genin will have to be punished for questioning and insulting my person. I had to pull rank as it would have smeared my reputation if I let it pass. Naruto told her, and who is this genin that had done such, Junin Namikaze? Kurunai asked coldly as she turned to look at the children before narrowing her eyes on the bound Inazuka. It was that Inazuka brat that we were told about, Kurunai. He mouthed off and got bound. Asuma pointed out the boy as he moved to stand behind Naruto whose eyes were dancing with amusement. Kurunai sighed. They weren't officially a team yet and her genin was already going to be punished. Junin Namikaze, will you allow me to punish him myself? I swear that he will not repeat his actions afterwards. She said which made Kiba's wide eyes widen just a bit more. See, now you're in trouble. Wait till we get home and your mom finds out. Akamaru said as he sat down and dropped his head. Very well then Kurunai Senpei. I trust that your genin will not commit the same mistake again for I will not be as lenient as I am now. 
He told her which made Kiba shiver in fright. Thank your gods and deities, Jen and Inazuka. Had your Junin not stepped up for you, I would have dealt your punishment myself. Naruto said as he turned back to face the rest of the class. And lastly, Team 7. Naruto smirk which made the rest of his friends wonder. Haruno Sakura, Namikaze Nariko, and Uchiha Sasuke. Your Junin sensei will be Hitaki Kakashi. Naruto said and turned to look at his friend who looked like he was ready to fall over and kill someone. What? Sasuke yelled while the pink-haired girl cheered. Did you hear that Nariko? We're on the same team as Sasuke-kun, she said, shaking Nariko. God damn it, why couldn't I have the better twin? Junin Namikaze, where do I file for a change of team? Sasuke said, addressing his friend formally as they were in the presence of two other Junins and at the moment, Naruto was on duty. You may file for it at the tower's placement office, Jenin Uchiha. Naruto asked with amusement lacing his voice. Filing for team replacement will be 72 hours after your Junins submit their team list at the tower. For those whose Junins are not present yet, wait here until they arrive. Have a good day, Naruto said and walked to leave the room, closing the door and breaking the hold on Kiba who fell on the floor instantly. Goddammit dog breath. You really ought to thank Kami that your Junin sensei saved you. Had she not done that, my twin brother would have broken you under five minutes. He's a goddamn Junin and a member of the torture and interrogation department. Next time Akamaru warns you off, you ought to listen. Just pray that Naruto doesn't report this to the Hokage or legal actions will still be taken even if your Junin sensei punishes you. Nariko told him and Kiba turned white as a ghost. Sasuke was still annoyed, as well as Shikamaru and Neji. Shino had stood up to walk over to his Junin sensei but turned to look at his friend once more. Don't worry, Sasuke. If Inazuka doesn't live at the end of the week, you will probably be placed in our team to cover the lost. Shino said as he faced his sensei and bowed. Hinata had stood up and stood next to Shino and bowed as well. Akamaru whined at Hinata's feet and she scooped the puppy into his arms as the little dog knew that Kiba will be punished by the lady for sure. Follow me, was all Kurinai said as she grabbed Kiba's jacket and opening the door to leave the classroom. Well, Team 10, please follow me as well. And let this be a lesson to you three. Know who are higher in rank than yourselves and you'll live to see the next morning. Asuma told them. Ino and Choji nodded while Shikamaru yawned. Asuma turned to look at the Nara, assessing him with one look. Naruto has great expectations of you, Shikamaru-kun. That goes for the two of you as well, Uchiha-kun, Hayuga-kun, as well as the Abarame heir. Asuma said as he trned to the other two who were there, and left the room with his genins following him out. Sakura turned to Nariko for confirmation which irritated Nariko that very moment. Yes Sakura, Naruto is a junin. For being said as the smartest kunoichi of our batch, you're awfully slow on the uptake. Yes, Naruto wasn't a dropout. He had been Junin since he was 7 and had gone to do S rank missions while we were stuck here learning history and how to throw kanai at trees. Anything else you want to know about? Nariko spoke angrily at her friend who shrunk in her seat. When did you find out that your twin was a Junin, Namikaze? Neji asked the girl who turned to face him and Sasuke. Last night when he broke our parents and made them cry for hours. And I don't even need to ask when you guys knew. I'm sure you've known from the start and kept it a secret. Nariko said as she narrowed her eyes on them. Of course we knew from the start. It was always amusing when you kept saying that Naruto was a dropout when he was already a Junin while you were the exact opposite, dead last. Sasuke sneered at her. Naruto shattered the Yandaimi? I thought he would never do that, must have been triggered by something. Neji told Sasuke who nodded. The passiveness angered Nariko. And you think that what he did was alright? Is that what you're saying? Nariko yelled at them but they just glared her down. And you think being ignored and forgotten is alright as well? Even till now, we still don't get why you were favored when you barely managed to pass why Naruto obvious was the far better twin. Smarter, talented, skilled, patient, and patient. His observant nature sometimes annoys me even but is just that good while you, well, you're you. Sasuke pointed out why Naruto was better than her and it was a verbal slap to her. Naruto ought to be ashamed of you instead. His older twin sister's a dead last and has zero talent and skills. Neji added salt to the proverbial wound that Nariko was already nursing. 
She sat quietly and ignored the rest of the room. Noriko didn't notice when the Hayuga had left with his team. She didn't even notice that two hours had passed before her Junin sensei came. Hitaki Kakashi entered the room and stared at them for a few moments before saying, My first impression of you is, you're boring. Meet me in the rooftop in five minutes. The man vanished and was followed by Sasuke who had shushined away as well. When did he learn it? Did Naruto teach him? Noriko stood up and left the classroom with Sakura behind her. She had yet to speak with her friend after her outburst. And at the moment, Noriko just didn't have the energy to do so. Upon reaching the rooftop, both girls saw Sasuke and their Junin taking before turning to look at them. Alright, let's introduce ourselves shall we? State your name, age, likes, dislike, and dream. Kakashi said and turned to Sasuke. Uchiha Sasuke, 11, I like sparring and learning new things from Naruto. I dislike fangirls and stalkers. And my dream would be to make my brother proud and live up to and surpass Itachi Ni and Naruto's expectations. Sasuke said confidently and Kakashi nodded. Your turn Pinky. I um, I'm Haruno Sakura, 11. I like my friends Noriko and Ino, clothes, and, she glanced at Sasuke before giggling. I dislike Kiba because he's a loud mouth. And my dream is um, she glanced at Sasuke again and giggled, making Kakashi raise a brow while Sasuke had not paid attention to whatever the girl was saying. Last up, Broody Chan. Namikaze Noriko, 10, nearly 11. I like my friends and my fam, parents. I dislike a certain someone and my dream is to beat that someone. Noriko said and Sasuke sneered. You can never beat Naruto even if you lived a hundred lives, dead last. Sasuke told her which made her angry but was stopped by their one-eyed Junin. Alright, be at training ground 7 at 6am sharp. I suggest you don't eat breakfast or you might throw up. Dismissed, Kakashi said and shushined. Sasuke did the same almost instantly, leaving the girls alone. Do you really hate your brother that much, Noriko? Sakura asked carefully. Naruto made mommy and daddy cry for hours Sakura-chan. You should have seen mommy when Naruto tried to move out. Daddy had to pull rank to make him stay. Noriko tried to justify her hatred. Sakura thought for a few moments before standing up. I know you won't like what I'm about to say and I'm not siding with your brother, but what would you have turned out if you were in his shoes and you were the one ignored your whole life? Sakura left the Namikaze female twin to ponder. Indeed, what would Noriko have become if she was Naruto? Minato had sent two ANBUs to search for Jiraiya. The memory of a forgotten warning came back the night he had to order Naruto to stay instead of allowing his son to leave. Until now, it still pained Minato and Kashina how horrible the situation had gotten between them. Both had made millions of mistakes and Minato was the reason that they had made them do what they did. Had he not decided for himself that Noriko was the gifted child, maybe the situation with Naruto would never had occurred. Currently, his son was out of the village with Ibiki and Genma for an A-rank mission to Yugakure. Teams 7, 8, 10 and Team Guy had passed. And it had been reported that Inazuka Kiba had pissed his son off even before the boy became an official genin. Sume had been informed immediately to make sure her heir didn't end up killing himself for being tactless. Much to the Abarame heir and the younger Uchiha's annoyance, they could not request for a new team since there was no other genin team looking for replacements and there was only a hand few that had passed this year. Minato sat in his office, contemplating what he could do with his son when he returned from his mission when the door to his office slammed open and an injured Genma came in. Hokage-sama, the mission to Yugakure was a success and their village leader had signed the treaty and alliance with Konoha. However, on the way back, we faced a few missing nins and three of them were from Kiri, Momochi Sabuza and the Demon Brothers. We managed to kill the demon brothers but Momochi had appeared and Naruto was left to fight him. Ibiki and I were recovering from the poisoned attacks of our opponents. Momochi had recognized Naruto from the bingo book and spoke of handing him over to Otto for the bounty. Naruto fought the demon of the mist off as best as he could but an unknown nin appeared and paralyzed Naruto, which gave way for Momochi to land several hits on Naruto. Before retreating, Naruto managed to cut off Momochi's arm which made the nuke nin drop his sword and vanished. Genma reported as fast as he could. And where is my son now? Minato instantly stood up. Ibiki rushed him to the hospital while I reported to you, Hokage-sama. Genma answered. Tenzo, 
inform Kashina what just happened and that I'll be in the hospital by the time you tell her. Minato said as he shushined out his office and towards the hospital. He was ever grateful that despite her loses, Tsunade stayed in Konoha and ran the hospital as the head medic. Minato reached the hospital and inquired where his son was held. Hokage-sama, Junin Namikaze is still inside the operating room with Tsunade-sama. Please wait outside until she comes out. The nurse said and Minato did as he was told, he waited. Kashina arrived ten minutes later with a worried look on her face. How is he? She asked him. Tsunade hasn't come out yet. Minato answered. An hour later, Tsunade finally came out with blood splatters on his operating gown. Kashina and Minato looked horrified. He'll be fine now. Ibiki managed to bring him in before any lasting damage happened to his body. Naruto's immune system fought off the bacterias that got into his system. I've stitched the bigger wounds and healed the broken ribs. He has no internal injuries as Ibiki made sure he was body bound before he had rushed him here. Naruto will need bed rest for at least three weeks and no heavy exercise until I say so. Tsunade told them seriously. Oh thank Kami, Tsunade Ba-chan. Kashina cried as she sobbed tears of joy that her son would live. However, there is a matter I must address you both. Follow me to my office. Tsunade ordered and they followed her. Once they were inside, Tsunade made them sit down. I may not have been there but I am fully aware of the rift between yourselves and Nariko with Naruto. I am very disappointed with you bother that it came this far even. I would have thought that you would have noticed, I certainly have. Tsunade said with a grave tone that made the couple bow their heads in shame. As the twins grew up, I would have thought you both would have been fair. I didn't interfere as I did not wish to question your parenting. However, now that the twins are turning 11, things are going to be harder to fix. I have heard the Junins and Chunin speak highly of Naruto. Even the Anbu I come across with speak so respectfully of him, not because he is your son Minato, but because of his talent, intelligence and skills. I wish I could say the same thing for Nariko. Tsunade rubbed her forehead and leaned back on his chair. I know we made mistakes, Tsunade Bachan. Minato and I are trying our best to make it up to Naruto. Kashina stopped when Tsunade raised her hand. Kashina, I don't think you understand the situation at all. The obvious neglect you've done cannot be easily forgiven by your own son. If I remember correctly, you forgot about him during the twins' sixth birthday. I saw you walking about the village and Naruto was nowhere in sight. I kept tabs and hoped that you would have done something. When Naruto graduated early, I thought you both would have noticed. But when I saw that you didn't even see what the rest of the village could see, I knew you have no idea. When he became Chunin, I hoped, yet you failed again. My last straw was when he became Junin and you still did not notice. Tsunade's words laced with disappointment that made the couple silently cry once more. Now, I wanted to speak with you both as Naruto's current condition should not be aggravated. That being said, I want you to not stress my patient while he is recuperating. Am I understood? She asked them and both nodded slowly as they wiped their tears. Fix your relationship with him. Do not give up since this was technically your fault. Stress the point to Nariko to better herself as I have noticed these past few days that she is not taking the news of Naruto being a Junin so well. Those years of training her better show itself soon, Minato. Tsunade added just before Shizune knocked and opened the door. Yandaimi-sama, Kashina-sama, as ordered by Tsunade-sama, Naruto is now in room 394 and resting. The assistant said before being dismissed with a nod by Tsunade. Do not forget what I told you both or I will ban you from seeing Naruto until I release him from here. She warned them one last time before they left her office to care for their son who needed them. In the middle of the square, the teams gathered with their Junin senseis who were discussing a plan to have a joint training session together with Anko and Itachi when Genma and Ibiki appeared. Oh you're back from Yugakure. How was it? And where is Naruto-kun? Anko instantly asked excitedly. The Genins turned to listen. The mission was a success but on the way home we ran into Momochi Sabuza and the Demon Brothers. Genma and I managed to kill the brothers and were recuperating with the Demon of the Mist appeared. Naruto had to fight him off to keep us alive. Naruto is strong but Zabuza outclassed him with experience and the fact that the demon is an S-rank noob nen, it's a blessing that Naruto managed on his own and lived. But really, Naruto would have been alright if it weren't for an unknown nen who paralyzed him, 
giving Zabuza the change to land hits on Naruto. Before Zabuza could retreat though, Naruto managed to detach the demon's arm and the sword fell on the ground along with the arm. Genma told them and all were in shock. And where is Naruto right now, Genma-san? Shikamaru inquired for his friends, they were worried. He is currently at the hospital, his operation would have been over by now. Ibiki told them and the four boys ran off to the direction of the hospital. Meet us tomorrow at training ground 7 for inter-team training. Dismissed. Kakashi commanded and the Junins instantly shushined out. The rest of the Genins just sat, stood there for a while. Wow. Naruto fought off an S-rank missing nin and managed to cut the bastard's arm before the coward retreated. Kiba said with a stunned expression. He had learned his lesson when he was punished by both his Junin sensei and his mother. Inazuka Sume had drilled it through his skull that the next time he opened his mouth and badmouthed someone, Kiba would be neutered. Aren't you going to see your brother, Noriko? Ino asked and all eyes were on the other blonde. I guess, was all she said as she stood up and calmly walked towards the hospital gloomily. She still didn't like the idea that Naruto was a certified Junin while she was a mere Genin. All they had been doing lately were just D-ranks. Being teamed up with Sasuke had been on of Noriko's wish since she attended the academy. But now that she got her wish, she didn't think she wanted it anymore. Sasuke wasted no time in tell her and Sakura how weak and useless they were. Also, Sasuke always spoke up of how he wished he was paired up with Naruto instead of her, how he was better than her, smarter than her, and more accomplished than her. It irritated her so much that up till now, everything had been going well for her. She was the favorite, daddy's little princess. And now, all of a sudden, her parents fussed over Naruto. He was barely there while they grew up. He was always in his room, well, she thought he was since she never really saw him at home. He rarely joined them for dinner as it was. Now, her mommy avoided seafood recipes because Naruto was allergic to them, never mind her daddy who couldn't eat seafood as well. Most of the meals were chicken, pork, beef, and vegetables. Naruto hated ramen so that was out of the menu as well. Noriko sighed as she arrived at the hospital and was told by the nurse, before she even asked, where her parents and brother were. As she turned to walk away, she couldn't help but hear the whispers of the people around her. Did you hear? The eldest finally found out, said one of the gossipers. Oh, and I'm sure she made a big fuss about it. I still wonder how Naruto-sama is being related to her. They are nothing alike at all, whispered the other one back. I know what you mean. I heard from the academy teachers that when Naruto-sama had stopped coming to school because he already graduated, she was bragging about how it was good so that he wouldn't embarrass her in public. Another voice joined in and Noriko fisted her hand as she tried not to listen. The nerve. It ought to be the other way around. It is as clear as day who is the better one. Naruto-sama is more talented, more intelligent, more patient, and is definitely more of a delight to work with than she will ever be. Said one other. Noriko walked faster, trying to get away from them to not yell back and say something that would get her in trouble. From what happened to Kiba, Noriko wasn't that dumb to make a mess of her own. She reached the floor and saw her brother's friends waiting outside with the Junins and a few Chunins she wasn't sure she had ever met before. Which made her mentally ask, how many people did Naruto knew? He had never been the friendly kind of guy, even to her. The door of the room opened and her parents came out with red eyes once again. Noriko looked livid that they cried again because of something Naruto did. Ever since you paid attention to him, all you ever did was cry every night. And here you are again, crying because he got a little hurt. Noriko yelled and all eyes were on her. Shino held back Neji while Shikamaru held back Sasuke. Too bad, they forget to cover his mouth as well. Well Naruto just proves how much better he is. He fought for this village and came out alive against an S-rank nuke Nen. He held his ground which I can definitely say you won't be able to do. You're nothing like him and no matter how much you wish, you will never be as great as him. He is everything you're not which is just sad because even the villagers wonder how he can stand to have a sister like you who is pathetic as the friends she hangs out with. You and Haruno are nothing but dead weights and despite Kakashi Sensei's motto, if both of you are ever in danger, I don't think I'd risk my life for any of you too. If you got captured, it meant that you were so weak you couldn't even fight back. So, save yourself any more embarrassment by shutting up, because no matter how much you whine about it, the fact remains and everyone can see who is better. 
Sasuke said as he turned his back on her, bowed his apology to the Hokage and entered the room where his friend was lying. For some reason, Noriko knew that her outburst backfired as she looked at her parents who stared at her with shock and pure disappointment in their eyes. Even the Junins and Chunins looked disgusted. She instantly left and ran off, not bothering to see if her parents even tried to stop her. The Namikaze couple silently watched from the door how their son's friends fussed over him. Worry was written all over their faces and just before anyone could say anything, the little blonde prince finally stirred and slowly opened his eyes. Dobi, Sasuke cried as his friend's eyes slowly opened. Hey Teme, Naruto replied with a slight grin on his face. Don't scare us like this ever again, Naruto. Jeez, you're so troublesome. Shikamaru said as he ran his fingers through his friend's hair. Sorry, couldn't be helped. Ibiki Taicho and Genma San needed to be protected. He tried to tell them but they still sighed. Don't worry about it, Naruto. We heard form Ibiki San already. We're just glad you're back. Neji spoke up as he placed a hand on Naruto's leg gently. A few more minutes, the Junins and Chunins joined in and told Naruto how glad they were of him and how proud they were that he protected his team even if it meant laying down his life on the line. Half an hour later, the Junins, Sans Kakashi, and the Chunins, Bar Ruka, left the hospital and returned to their duties. Tsunade had entered the room to check up on her godson and gently berated him that he made her worry. Naruto at least looked apologetically before the situation turned serious when the blonde noticed the couple at the back of the room. May I inquire as to why they are still here? Surely they would have returned home to their precious daughter since they can see I am alive still. Naruto pointed out coldly that even Tsunade couldn't help but flinch. No one really spoke for a long time until Shikamaru sighed and asked. Hokage-sama, I do not mean to be disrespectful but I must ask. When you and your wife realized that you forgot Naruto's sixth birthday, why didn't you immediately set out to make amends right then and there? The couple looked ashamed and sighed. I think we tried, but for some reason, we just keep getting distracted. Noriko would always demand our full attention. We train her so hard and when we finally think we have time, we keep losing the nerve to ask Naruto for anything. As time went on, the problem became harder and harder. Naruto always seemed to disappear and work got harder. Minato tried to explain as best as he could but Naruto only raised his brow. You know that your excuses are feeble right? And what do you mean you have been training Noriko? She barely passed the academy test. If she wasn't your daughter, they wouldn't have allowed her to graduate with that horrible bushin she made. Naruto pointed out and they winced again. And don't blame me for disappearing all the time, you made me that way. I was always forgotten. Since I was three, I knew that something wasn't right and that you would never give me the same attention you do with Noriko. So right then and there, I stopped asking for anything if I could manage it. Most of my clothing, my books, and my equipment were from my friends. I went as far as borrowing money from them until I could pay them back when I could manage it. Aside from the breath of life, room, and bed, you gave me nothing, well, except the reality that I will never be anything in your eyes as your pathetic daughter. Naruto said as he smirked the one that he gave his victims a T and I. Uruka and Kakashi knew of the smirk of course which scared them a little as Naruto was using it on his own parents. Yes, they weren't the best but they still were his parents. But again, Naruto's words came back to them which made sense. They had all the chance they could but they didn't do anything. Now that we have heard the first set of whys, let's move on to why you are still here. Naruto asked narrowing his eyes on them. Kashina shifted and swallowed hard. Naruto, please, I know that we have no right to ask it of you but. I beg of you, give us another chance. Just one last chance. Kashina was begging her son as she cried. Tsunade and the rest looked away, not wanting to see it lest they too tried to ask Naruto to give them the chance. Naruto on the other hand, narrowed his eyes on the couple. They had never given him any reason for him to even forgive them, let alone ask for a chance. Answer me this. If you do have an answer, then I might consider it. Naruto spoke up after a long silent moment. The couple looked hopeful and nodded. What is it that you think you need to fix between us? The last time, you didn't even know what it was. Do you know now? He challenged them and all eyes turned to the couple who stood straighter. Our strained, no, our nearly non-existent relationship with you. We know that Minato and I will have to work hard for it but we want to fix it. I want to know who my son is and everything about him. 
Kashina answered bravely and waited. Everyone waited for Naruto to speak up. Another long pregnant of silence swept through the room and only Naruto's deep inhale and exhale broke it. One chance, and if you fail, I will be nothing more than another shinobi in the service of the Yandaimi Hokage. You are never to acknowledge me as a son as I will never speak of you as my parents. You are never to treat me any different from the other shinobis if you ever fail. And you are to agree that if you fail, I will change my name to whatever I choose and will live by that name till I die of old age or in the line of duty. My name will never will Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto if you fail this chance. Naruto told them with a deep, cold, and solid tone. Yes, he was only ten, but he could change it when it suited him. The others listened and vowed to themselves to never piss the blonde off no matter what. They also vowed to make sure that Naruto was safe and protected. The couple understood the gravity of the situation and nodded in acceptance of the demand. They were grateful for the one chance and promised themselves to never fail as they feared the thought of losing their son. If they fail, you do know that the clans will fight to make you or their own right? Shino spoke up and everyone turned to him then to Naruto who looked a bit worried then sighed. I had not thought of that. But I will cross that bridge when I get there, if I get there that is. He corrected as he saw the couple winced. The door suddenly opened and banged on the wall. Naruto had not been on his guard which made him jump off the bed and fall on the floor. Tsunade, Minato, and Kashina grabbed Jiraiya angrily while the rest helped Naruto back on the bed. What the hell were you thinking? Tsunade screamed at her old teammate's face. The couple had kanais on opposite sides of his neck and the toad sanin swallowed hard. Sorry, I didn't mean to, I swear. I panicked, he tried to explain as he was being held by three strong nin and one could punch his head off if she tried hard enough. Tsunade released Jiraiya and went to check on Naruto to see if he was alright. The Junin, Chunin, and the Jenins glared and threw their key at Jiraiya the whole time the head medic was checking Naruto. If anything happened to Naruto, Konoha will be another Sanin short. Kakashi spoke up and the rest nodded in agreement, which made Jiraiya worry as there was little chance he would come out alive with all of them against him. After a few more minutes, Tsunade shared her findings. Luckily, Naruto is alright. The fall didn't damage anything but give him a small ache from the fall. This made everyone sigh in relief before glaring at the man who just came. So what brings the equally negligent godfather here? Naruto asked with a trunk load of hate. He was tired, a bit hungry, and in pain once more. I um, I came to talk to Minato but the tower staff said he was here. I thought something happened to Nariko-chan. The answer was wrong which made Naruto freeze the whole room with just his facial expression. That useless Kunoichi isn't here. The door is still wide open for you to leave. Your presence is not needed. The Yandaimi and his wife were just leaving. Go see to your precious goddaughter and make sure she hasn't managed to kill herself from just walking home. Naruto told the man who shivered in fright as the eyes of his godson bore into his own. I um, Jiraiya tried to apologize but it was too late. Naruto was mad. Leave, Naruto commanded and a giant fist of ki sent Jiraiya out the door and slamming against the wall that cracked heavily. The genins were on the floor in shock as they never felt that much ki in their lives. Uruka, Kakashi, Tsunade, Minato, and Kashina chalked a little before they regained their balance and breathing. Jiraiya was stunned, not noticing the pain he was in as he tried to get himself back on his feet. Naruto had coughed hard and blood came out of his mouth. Tsunade was instantly trying to see what the damage was while Neji turned his Baikugan on to see if his bones or nerves were damaged. Sasuke, Shino, and Shikamaru, along with Uruka and Kakashi, stood to the side while Naruto was being looked over. Minato, Kashina, take Jiraiya and leave. Naruto's internal wounds nearly ripped themselves apart. I told you that Naruto will not be stressed out. Get out and never enter the hospital Jiraiya. You are not good for Naruto's healing. Tsunade commanded and the couple obeyed before they too were banned from visiting Naruto. I don't want him near me ever again. Naruto said in between coughs before the couple left with Jiraiya. Truly, for a Sanin, Jiraiya was as stupid and as loud as Nariko. No wonder the girl turned out the way she did, thought most of the occupants of the room. Little was known to them that the hands of change had been turned by chaos and destruction. The days went by and Naruto got better and better. 
His friends visited him every single day as well as the Junins, Chunins and Anbu he knew. They would tell him what was happening outside, a few details of a mission, that was not a secret for the Anbu, and Tora. Naruto chuckled at the looks his friends had when describing the nightmare that was catching Tora for the wife of the daimyo. Well, I am glad that Ibiki sensei didn't let me go through it. He commented but the other scowled. No, he didn't, but he gave you something equally worse, if not, more. Sasuke muttered and another chuckle came from Naruto. Aside from his friends, Minato and Kashina had been there every day as well. After Kashina made Noriko's breakfast and watch her daughter leave the house, she would pack up the obento she readied for Naruto and left to head to the hospital for most of the day. Minato would spend lunch at the hospital with his wife and Naruto but returned to his office to do his paperwork, this time reading through them himself. You do know that you can use cage bushin and let them do your work for you. The more you make, the faster your paperwork will be done. Naruto commented one day after hearing the man whine about traitorous papers stacking against him. Kashina laughed while Naruto smirked when the Yandaimi sat on his seat with the look of shock and disbelief. How do you think the Sandame was able to keep up with his workload and watch over Konohamaru when his parents had died? But I'm surprised the old man didn't tell you about that trick. Naruto commented again. Well, I didn't think I would have needed to tell him since he was said to be a genius and all, Naruto-kun. Said a voice from the door and all turned to see the Sandame standing there with his grandson. GG, Konohamaru. Naruto greeted as the boy ran into the room and to the other side of the bed and showed Naruto his drawing. Look what I made boss. Konohamaru cried excitedly as showed Naruto his drawing of Konoha from the Hokage Mountains viewpoint. The picture was not so bad. A bit crude but it was better than most of Konohamaru's age group could make. Wow, you're getting better and better, Ko. Keep it up and before you reach graduate from the academy you'll be a master of painting. Naruto praised the boy who blushed and nodded. The old man told him about his trip to the daimyo's palace and how Konohamaru behaved well when Naruto had told him before they had left. An hour later, the adults left and went to Minato's office where Jiraiya and Tsunade were waiting with Orochimaru of all people. What brings the legendary Sanins to my office this afternoon? Minato asked with shock yet still respectful. Orochimaru was indeed a bit bitter that the Sandame had not chosen him as his successor but it opened to more opportunities of traveling and discovering new things all over the world. After a year of traveling, Orochimaru had been ever so glad to not have become Hokage and missed all the things he had seen and learned. Tsunade sent me a message concerning Naruto's health case. After Jiraiya's stupidity, Naruto's organs nearly ripped themselves apart. Luckily, Tsunade healed them to the best of her capabilities. But she made a point to keep an eye on Naruto. And as she briefed me the moment I stepped foot into the village, Naruto's body had begun to shift and something stirred in his chakra system. The snake Sanin explained and Minato was stunned while his wife was trembling in fear. Are you saying that something is wrong with my son? Minato asked with a warning tone but Orochimaru raised his hands. Nothing is wrong with him. However, Tsunade says that his chakra system has changed. Which is why I will be looking at him later this evening after I read a few more of his lab results that Tsunade thinks might help us in figuring out what is wrong with your son, Minato. The Sanin answered back without a threat in his voice even if he had the right to. Anyway, how is your attempts in fixing your relationship with Naruto? Tsunade asked, shifting the subject to the couple who sighed deeply. He is still wary of us, and I do not blame him. We mostly just ask him about his achievements, his hobbies, likes, and dislikes, dreams and goals too. Minato asked first before turning to Kashina who smiled sadly. We asked him about his favorites too, food, color, and drink. He's allergic to seafood like Minato, he doesn't like ramen like I do but he likes dango, sushi, onigiri, and chicken tempura. He doesn't like bitter foods. He occasionally likes to eat spicy food when he feels likes it, and on some days, he eats everything with wasabi. Kashina told them and Tsunade smiled as well as Orochimaru and the Sandame. He hates it when people hover over him and correct him when he knows his right. He doesn't like it when people judge him by how he looks instead of getting to know him. And, Minato continued but stopped and looked a bit disappointed. He turned to Kashina who sighed as well, knowing what her husband was about to say. And what? Jiraiya asked, which made Minato and Kashina feel a bit more worse. 
and he hates you Jiraiya. Kashina said and all eyes turned to the white-haired Sanin. Let me guess, Jiraiya said something stupid in the midst of Naruto's anger? Here is in guest and got nods from Tsunade and the couple. Well, I suggest you stay away from him Jiraiya. When Naruto dislikes a person, accidents tend to happen whenever they cross paths. And trust me, I know Naruto. With his skills, he can catch you off guard and give a deadly blow. If he really wants something, he can kill you if he wants. Whatever you did must have really angered him to say that he hates you instead of disliking you. Here is an explained to the group and they understood. What did you do, Jiraiya? I know that it was stupid but cared to shed some light? Orochimaru inquired stoically but his eyes were dancing in amusement. Jiraiya pouted and shrugged. What the big buffoon did was he barged into the hospital and slammed the door so loud that Naruto fell on the floor when he had just come out of an operation from a mission he had gone out to with Ibiki and Genma that ran into complications. It's no secret that Naruto and Nariko hate each other but he came in and said that he rushed to the hospital when he heard Minato and Kashina were there and thought that Nariko was the one that was checked in as a patient. And when he saw it wasn't the female twin, he shrugged it off and apologized like he didn't care at all. Tsunade explained and both Orochimaru and the Sandame nodded in understanding. I knew you could be a bit stupid but really Jiraiya? That was just low, even for you. Orochimaru commented as he shook his head and turned to Minato. By the way, the snake elders wanted me to send you a message. Before your time is up, see what needs to be seen. The sands of time has begun to fall for the wheel of fate has been spun and is now taking its toll. The world as we know it will hang in a balance between life and death. Your time is running and the world will run out of breath. You believed in prophecies and allowed it to rule. Now watched as the flames burn for you have played the biggest fool. The whole room was quiet and all eyes were on Minato now. Minato, what does it mean? Here is an asked, his voice solid and a bit guarded. The toads, before the twins were born gave a prophecy that one of my children will fulfill its role. Gifted by the highest of hosts, your child will bring forth the power that has never before seen by mortal eyes. The one loved by the gods and feared by demons shall bear power that may bring about a new age or the end of the world when the time comes for the decision to be made. Only then will the world's fate hang in a balance for the first and last time. Then when I was told that I would have a boy and a girl, I knew it had to be Nariko cause as far as I knew, girls were rare in my family. He said but Orochimaru looked worried. I have to disagree, Minato. As I traveled the lands, I have come across information about your origins, and the line of the Namikaze family had always been girls. Your mother's genes must have been strong to birth a son but every little thing about the Namikaze line has been about a female. When a son is born, it takes the name of the family as most of the offspring are females. Every Namikaze are laud to produce at least one male Namikaze before taking the name of the husband. Orochimaru said as he pulled out scrolls from his bag and handed it to Minato. The whole room was dead silent for 10 minutes before the Yandaimi dropped the scroll on the table. Meaning all this time, Naruto was the one meant by the toads and not Nariko? Jiraiya broke the silence as he regained his balance. However, the Sandame, Tsunade, and Orochimaru didn't like what they were understanding. Let me get this straight. All these years of abandonment and favoring Nariko were because you thought she was the prophesied child of the toads? Tsunade asked with anger rising in her stomach. I did not think you would have turned out this way Minato. I expected more from you and Kashina. Here is in commented with utter disgust that made the couple shrink in shame. And to think that you were chosen as Hokage because of your fairness and just choices. Orochimaru added his own which made Minato shrink just a bit more. And I'm guessing that Jiraiya had a hand in this as well? Tsunade inquired as she turned to her old teammate. No need to guess. It has his name written all over it. Orochimaru said and got a nod from the Sandame. It seems that the two of you have a great deal of making it up to Naruto. Jiraiya, I can honestly say that you're hopeless. He will never forgive you and nothing you say will make him do so. I can say that speaking to him about the prophesy and how the decision was made would make it worse and he will come after your life and that of Minato and Kashina's as well. It would be best to not mention it to him at all lest we face the world's destruction sooner than it was foretold. Here is in commanded with a tone as he stood up, followed by Tsunade and Orochimaru. Jiraiya, I will remind you to stay away from Naruto. 
And never mention Noriko in his presence or he might just take away your chances Minato. Kashina, Tsunade added before the three left the office. The couple looked horrified and felt disgusted with themselves while Jiraiya didn't know what to feel. He had favored Noriko the whole time because they had assumed it was her, totally ignoring Naruto who was the real gifted one. If the Anbu and Shinobis were not exaggerating with their praise of the boy then old man Sandame would have been right with his warning. Naruto would be able to kill him. After Orochimaru had informed Minato that his family line had been mostly females and not males as he had thought it was, he began to look back at what little he could remember of his old life. He vaguely remembered his mother and father as he had blocked out the horrible images of his parents' death when he was five. He remembered his mother telling him nothing about her family or that of his father's. He had assumed since his father had many brothers, the male line of their family was the strong one. Looking at the papers Orochimaru had given him, he read every little information he could and had come to realize that it was technically his mother who was a namikaze and not his father. Minato tried his best to recall the memories he had never wished to remember in order to find answers to questions that had piled up on him. He was lost in thoughts that he didn't hear Kashina enter his study and locking the door behind her. Minato, we have to talk, she began and he looked up at her and then sighed deeply. She took a seat in front of him and tried her best to find the words to begin the conversation that they both secretly dreaded. H how this all this happened? How could we have not seen Naruto's progress? Surely the academy would have given a report right? And why didn't Nariko tell us that Naruto had not been attending school? If she did, we probably could have found out about all this before it got this big. Kashina told Minato who leaned back on his chair. I do not know what you want me to say, Kashina. I already am wondering how much my own staff has kept hidden from me. My previous secretary, Hoshio Chigusa, had surely been slipping important documents on top. But then again, I can't really blame her. I should have read them before approving anything. It seemed that many of them conspired to hide the fact that Naruto was a genius and for some reason, I think I can understand why Nariko would not have told us anything. Minato told Kashina who looked confused. Think about it, if we had found out, all the attention we had been showering Nariko would have been divided if not transferred to Naruto. His achievements alone are amazing and he achieved so much before his 10th birthday. We cannot blame Nariko but ourselves. We have been horrible parents. Yes, the prophecy had been important but we had allowed it to control our lives this whole time. All the training we gave Nariko, I hate to admit it but it doesn't seem like it paid off at all. I took a look at her grades and she is the dead last of her genin class. She barely passed according to Aruka and the other teachers. Minato said in total irritation on himself. I had decided that it was Nariko since I remembered that my father had many brothers on his side. I honestly do not even remember anyone from my mother's side growing up. They had died when I was five years old and brought to Konoha by Jiraiya when he had found me all those years ago. Our village had been raided by missing nins and my parents were killed in front of me. I had been trying every single day when I arrived here to never remember what had happened. Up until now, I admit, I thought that I had always been right when it came to my family history. I had forgotten about most of my past and because of that, because of that, I may have just condemned us all to die when the time comes. He said, his voice breaking as he watched his hands shaking in front of his own eyes. Both had been silent after Minato had told Kashina his past and she had tears running down her eyes. Minato's past was as horrible as her own. Her country had been attacked and little had been left of Whirlpool when she had ran with the other survivors. After coming to Konoha, she had vowed to forget the deaths of her family and the destruction of her country. It had just been so horrible that it took her more than four years to forget about the memories and nightmares. The long silence seemed to stretch for so long. Neither Minato or Kashina had the nerve break the growing silence but they also knew that one of them had to speak once more. And what of Nariko now? Minato, our daughter had always been our priority and from how she treated the news, I do not even want to imagine how she would be when Naruto returns from the hospital. I had given her so much, I know that and you know that. We have trained, taught, and provided her with everything we possibly can but it seems like none of it brought forth any result, not even the slightest if she is the last of her batch. Kashina's voice expressed worry and fear for her children and the future of their family. Minato still had not spoken at all but Kashina gave him time to think. 
It was shocking to know how different their son was from their daughter and how far he had already gotten in life without them knowing until now. The mere fact that Naruto had managed to secure his rank and kept it hidden from them, Kashina wondered just what else Naruto could do. I understand your concerns Kashina. I really do, which leads me to question many things right now. One of them would be able Naruto's other abilities and skills. I know what is written but it can't be just that. Another would be who else has been helping Naruto hide all this. And Nariko, I question if she really is ready for the life of a shinobi. We have not disciplined her well enough if her outbursts and tantrums have anything to say about it. The maturity I see in Naruto, I cannot see it in Nariko, Kashina. Not even a sliver of it. Minato sighed in defeat and Kashina knew from the tone of his voice that the conversation was over for the time being. She sighed as well as she stood up and left the office, feeling more burdened than before. She had come to her husband to seek answers but she had left with even more questions than before. Thinking back on what Minato had spoken about their daughter, Kashina had to agree even if it pained her to do so. Nariko was her child and they had given her everything they could give but it seemed that they had not given her everything. They had failed to discipline Nariko and teach her manners and respect. And now, it was showing how little they really have taught her about the more important lessons in life. Kashina couldn't help but ask herself as well, was Nariko really ready for the life of a shinobi? The days went by and the couple tried their best to get to know their son who obviously was very wary of them still. It seemed like no matter what they do, they could never have their son the way they wished. Orochimaru had come around, which made Naruto smile at the man as he was checked over. They had talked about the man's travels and Naruto told him stories about his missions, without the details, and the exams, which pained the couple when they listened. Sasuke, Shikamaru, Shino, and Neji visited every day with Itachi, Uruka, Kakashi, Gai, Ibiki, Enko, Genma, and Yugo. Even Neji's teammates visited as well as Shikamaru's. However, when Kiba had visited, Sasuke was inches away from killing the Inazuka for outright saying that Naruto was careless for thinking that he could take a missing nin by himself. Neji was being restrained by Lee and Gai while Sasuke was held off by his brother and Itachi. Kiba, Naruto is a junin, just reminding you just in case you forgot. And also, Naruto has been killing missing nins for nearly four years now. The mission he was on just had more nins thrown their way and incapacitated Ibiki-san and Genma-san who were with him. He defended them while they were trying to save enough strength to move after they had been weakened from a lot of fighting and running. Keep your mouth shut before someone does it for you, permanently. Shikamaru said as he crossed his legs and arms calmly. It made Kiba and Akamaru shiver in fright as the calm Nara looked ready to kill him if it weren't for the others who would stop him. Honestly, I thought the Inazuka would have trained their children like their dogs. At least the dog was quiet and respectful. TCH, you indeed better listen to the Nara boy, Brad. I'm tempted to stitch that lips of yours close right now. Anko threatened the paling Inazuka while Akamaru was shivering in Hinata's arms. Kakashi had intervened and said that it was best they leave Naruto to rest. In all honesty, he just wanted to leave before he killed the boy himself. Everyone had said their goodbyes just in time as Tsunade came around to check up on Naruto. The day before Naruto was to be released and Kashina had cleaned her son's bedroom, which was hardly dirty. Kashina had wondered how the room was kept clean when Naruto had not been there for nearly three weeks now. She had asked Minato about it and he told her that there are seals in the room that keeps the room clean even if Naruto was not around to clean it himself. Kashina was surprised when she had heard this and felt proud yet ashamed that her son was able to do seals and it was just now she had known of it depth. While Minato was working in Kashina preparing for Naruto's return, Nariko watched with anger as she was being ignored by her parents now. Well, she wasn't really ignored, per se, but the attention she used to get from her parents weren't the same anymore. It was all about Naruto now. Naruto this, Naruto that, Nariko was getting sick of it. Even her godfather was a bit off for some reason. The Toad Sanin had been invited to dinner once after the Snake Sanin had returned and the atmosphere of the dining room was suffocating. Nariko tried to lift it by chatting away with her parents and her godfather but the conversation never really rolled on like it used to. They would answer using a few words or just nod, shake their heads. She was getting frustrated by the day. 
It went from bad to worse when both the other two Sanins had come to check on Naruto's room earlier for some reason. They had stayed for dinner with them and Jiraiya had arrived just before they sat down. Nariko had never gotten along well with her godmother as the woman had always been busy at the hospital and as for the snake Sanin, she barely knew anything about him except what they were taught in school. She decided to remain quiet that night but could feel eyes watching her every move even if she didn't see it. She turned to her parents who looked so ashamed for some reason, Nariko could guess why, and was all nervous throughout the meal. Naruto will be released from the hospital tomorrow, Kashina. We have moved his bed away from the wall so that we could place the machines that we still need to monitor Naruto's condition. He is out of danger but the wounds seem to refuse to remain close and any bursts of key triggers his wounds to reopen. He wants out of the hospital and since you ordered him to remain here, he shall return and resume his rest in this household. Tsunade said as Minato flinched at the emphasized word. Minato remembered that night vividly which never ceased to hurt him over and over again. That being the case, if anything ever happens to Naruto while he stays here, I will hold you both responsible. I am warning you, if he is stressed out and doesn't heal within a month as we prognosticate, I will pull him out of here and you will never get hold on him ever again. Tsunade added with a warning tone that made Minato, Kashina, and even Jiraiya freeze in their seats. Orochimaru was passive as if he didn't care of the conversation that was happening around him while Noriko was seething with anger. Why can't he remain in the hospital then? Wouldn't it be better off him being there so you could keep an eye on him? Noriko asked, shoving down her anger as much as she could. We could but he dislikes staying in the hospital as he reasons that it makes him more restless stuck in a white-walled room for hours on end. Besides, as far as I know, you have nothing to worry about. His bedroom is out of your way and you will barely be here while he is. Just think of it like how it usually is. Him nothing being here even if he is. You have always been good at that, haven't you, Noriko? Tsunade answered with a tone that Noriko didn't like and worried the other adults bar Orochimaru who was smirking ever so lightly. Instead of answering, Noriko stood up and left the table and stomped up to her bedroom. Hum, what a rude child. I am guessing that she had little to no discipline growing up. Add Jiraiya's influence. No wonder she is the way she is now. She won't last a day outside these walls of Konoha if she doesn't shape up. So opposite of Naruto, Orochimaru commented extemporaneously. Noriko threw herself on her bed and screamed into her pillow. She hated Naruto with every fiber of her being. If he stayed invisible like he had been doing all this time, everything would have not changed. Screw his achievements. So what if he was a Junin? She'll just ask her dad to let her skip the Chunin exams and take the Junin exams instead. She'll show him that she could be better than him. Then she remembered that Naruto was to return tomorrow. She sat up and waited for the Sanins to leave and for her parents to be asleep. Then she'll go into Naruto's room and mess it up as much as she could without making any noise. Noriko had a smirk on her face and prepared for her revenge. She watched as the Sanins left half an hour later. At another hour, her parents retreated to their own bedroom and she finally moved. Noriko walked as quietly as she could through the hall and up the stairs to Naruto's attic bedroom. Truthfully, she had never been there ever since Naruto had asked to move up there. And when she did get there, she was shocked to see how big the bedroom was and how occupied it was. There were shelves and shelves of books. It looked like a mini library to her. The whole place was bigger than her own bedroom which annoyed her first and foremost. She proceeded to find the bed and saw it near the window. There were machines set up, which she decided to leave untouched, to not earn the ire of the snake and slug sonnings of course, a study table, and a medium-sized kotatsu a few feet away. She decided to mess the library first and leave the bed area last. Noriko took out a kanai and as she was about to grab one of the books on the shelf, she was zapped by lightning making her yelp and drop her kanai on the floor. Her hand had obvious first-degree burns and the sleeve of her shirt was seared. Noriko cradled her hand in pain as she tried her best not to make any more noise lest her parents wake up and look for her. She was no craven but for some reason, Naruto had made sure that even when he wasn't around, his bedroom would be protected. It made Noriko wonder just what else Naruto did within the confines of his bedroom to keep it secured. She stood up and went to the bed area, having grabbed her kanai with her other hand, throwing the weapon on the bed which bounced up and lodged itself on the ceiling. Noriko's eyes widened. The hell? 
Even the bed was protected? She decided that it would be in her best interest to just leave so she did, totally forgetting the kanai. The next day, Noriko woke up and bandaged her hand as best as she could. She had no healing jutsus in her arsenal so she had to wait until she got a nurse to look at her wound. The thought about going to the hospital was saddening as she knew most, if not, all the nurses hated her, as well as the doctors. When she got down to the dining room, the house was quiet. Too quiet, Noriko entered the kitchen and saw a plate of food on the table. Her dad must have left early and it seemed like her mom wasn't around too. Noriko, I prepared your breakfast left it for you when you wake up. I had to rush to the hospital to help with Naruto. He's coming home today. You father left earlier to finish his paperwork so he could come home early and have tomorrow off. Love, mom. Noriko was more annoyed than before. Her mom had gone off to care for Naruto since he was coming home. Uh, really? What's so great about him anyway? Take away the titles and rank and what is he? She yelled out. Rich, handsome, charismatic, genius, and a leader. Answered Sasuke who was standing behind her. Noriko jumped in fright as she saw her teammate there. Sakura had just arrived and stood beside the Uchiha. What are you two doing here? Noriko asked, looking at Sakura mostly. Kakashi sensei sent us to fetch you. We have D rank missions today. Sakura answered her friend then turned to Sasuke who was smirking. Sasuke kun. What were you saying just now? She asked which made the boy smirk further. The useless one asked what Naruto was without the Junin title and rank. So I answered. Rich, handsome, charismatic, genius, and a leader, which he is since he had already led a team of Junins and Chunins before. He is rich on his own right aside from the fact that he has his share of inheritance from the Hokage. Naruto could buy the Uchiha district in a year or two if he wanted to. His missions pay him so much, not including the bonuses he receives from his clients for excellent work. Sasuke bragged which made Noriko huffed in anger. It was now obvious to Sakura that Sasuke was making Noriko angry by rattling off Naruto's achievements to her face. If Noriko wasn't her friend, she would have snickered a bit. But she didn't show any emotion and just sighed. She had come to realize that being on the same team as Sasuke wasn't as great as she thought it would be. Sasuke wasn't mean but he would often point out her and Noriko's mistakes, tell them how useless and a burden they were during tasks, and irritate Noriko as much as he could every single day by speaking of Naruto out loud. Now that Sakura paid more close attention to her surroundings, she had noticed how Noriko wasn't as popular to the adults as she was to their class, well, to Ino, Kiba, and her at least. The rest of their classmates had stayed away from their group and Naruto's group, not wanting to be caught in between. The adults would often whisper to each other and look at Noriko and shake their heads, as if she had done something wrong. The Chunins at the mission office also glared and sneered whenever they were there for D ranks. And even those Chunins would tell Sasuke out loud about Naruto's previous missions when Noriko wasn't within earshot. Sasuke smirked and turned to walk out the house. Hurry up, I want to finish the list of D ranks in order to help Naruto home later. He called out which just blew Noriko's top. Again, Sakura sighed as she turned and followed the boy out, listening to Noriko walk behind her, mumbling under her breath. It was just then that Sakura noticed Noriko's wrapped hand. Noriko, what happened to your hand? She cried out, making Sasuke turn to look at them. Sasuke walked to them and grabbed Noriko's arm, pulling the bandage off. He then smirked before laughing as he released Noriko's hand. I know that burn. That's a first degree burn from a lightning jutsu and I'm pretty sure I know how you got zapped, airhead. Sasuke said as he turned once more and walked ahead of them, leaving a confused Sakura and an angrier Noriko. Noriko bandaged her hand as quick as she could and turned to Sakura. Butt out, Sakura, she yelled and walked ahead, making Sakura angry. Well sorry for being worried about my friend then. Sakura shouted back and stomped past Noriko and caught up to Sasuke. Their Junin sensei was waiting outside the mission office when they arrived. Kakashi eyed the three, seeing Noriko's arm and turned to Sasuke with a raised brow. Five words. First degree burns, lightning jutsu. Sasuke answered the unspoken question with a smirk. Kakashi eyed Noriko who squirmed on her spot before turning to open the door and enter the office. They got 18 d rank missions and Kakashi dividing them into three, each having six d rank missions. Alright, 
all three of you will do the tasks in your list. If you finish a task, proceed to the next one. If you can finish your tasks, proceed to report them in, receive your payment and dismiss yourselves. I'll be checking up on you three when you least expect it so don't stack off and do your jobs. He said as he handed them a list of tasks and turning to Noriko. Head to the hospital and have you burn healed before you start your tasks. It will slow you down if you're injured. He added before he shushined out the office. Sasuke didn't even argue and left as fast as he could as well. He already planned to be quick as he could so he could help out Naruto when he would be leaving the hospital. Noriko, however, sneered as she watched the leaves fall on the floor. She already knew that their sensei was going to be at the hospital, hanging out with her brother. The thought alone frustrated her more before she left the office, not speaking to her friend at all. Noriko was not in the mood and the thought of Naruto just made her even more angry. Sakura, who was left alone, decided to reevaluate her goals and plans, including her friendship with Namikaze Noriko. Ever since Naruto's Junin rank was revealed, Noriko had become distant, easily irritated, and, to quote Inara, very troublesome. She left the office and concluded that she ought to finish her tasks first then reevaluate everything. The whole day had passed on in a blur and Sasuke had finished his tasks in record time. He received his payment and went straight to the hospital and just caught up with the others who waved and greeted him. As they entered Naruto's room, their friend was sitting up and smiling a bit at them. Hey, you guys came. He greeted them. Of course we came, Dobi. Sasuke said with a slight pout that he would deny later on if asked. The others laughed a bit before spreading out the room and packing up the things that had been brought for Naruto's use. Kashina had been packing the clothes when the rest had arrived and no one really spoke to her after politely greeting the Hokage's wife. Naruto's friends still were wary about the couple when it came to Naruto's person since they had known for a long time now that the couple had been neglecting their son. Tsunade had arrived with Orochimaru, finding everyone waiting around the room for them to give the signal of Naruto's release. I told you didn't I? Tsunade said with a smirk on her face while Orochimaru shook his head and chuckled. Well Naruto-kun, you were released from hospital confines but, the man began and everyone listened in. You will remain in bed for two weeks until we say you can move about on your own. Your injuries have yet to fully close up and until then, no jutsus, no strenuous activities, no stress of any form or we will bring you back here again until you fully heal. Is that understood? Orochimaru spoke seriously and Naruto sighed. Yes, I fully understand. I'm sure with everyone's help I'll be able to avoid all those, as much as possible. Naruto said with a smirk and everyone else smiled at him. We'll be coming along with you to your house so we can place the machines on you to monitor your progress. Your legs won't be able to support you since we have numbed them for you not to feel the pain of your strained muscles. Your arms can move but like Orochimaru warned you, you cannot strain yourself or even your arms will inflict pain on you, making your healing longer than it should. Tsunade said as Guy came in with a wheelchair which made Naruto sigh. Do I really have to ride that? He asked with made the people smirk. It's either that or Guy or Ibiki carrying you home bridal style. Tsunade answered which made Naruto shake his head instantly and the others laugh. Fine then, stupid wheelchair. Naruto resigned himself and mumbled the last part. Orochimaru himself moved and carried the grumbling patient and set him gently on the wheelchair. I'll push it myself. Who knows what you all might think of doing. Tsunade killed everyone's silent desire to be the one to wheel Naruto out the hospital. When they reached the ground floor, everyone saw Minato dismissing a few Anbu and Naruto raised a brow when he noticed the weasel, cat, and dog masks. Now that he was looking around, Yugo, Itachi, and Kakashi weren't there. He chuckled to himself as he knew that the three were assigned to keep watch as they walked towards the Hokage's manor. Naruto had ceased calling it, home, since he never really felt that it was home. The Aburame, Hayuga, Nara, and Uchiha compounds were more of home than the Hokage's manor. Hell, even Gai, Ibiki, Kakashi, Enko, Yugo, and Aruka's apartments were home to Naruto than his own. As the group made their way, the people around looked at them and waved at Naruto who smiled and waved back. One of the old ladies Naruto had helped a few times came close and gave him a bunch of flowers and a basket of fresh bread. Get well soon, Naruto-kun. We miss having you over for afternoon tea. She told him as the other old ladies waved at him. I will, Nanami-san. 
He replied and smiled at the old ladies before the group moved on. When they were a great deal away from the women, Orochimaru smirked as he turned to Naruto. So, in your busy schedule, you still find the time to have tea and chat with the old ladies Naruto-kun? He asked while the others snickered and Naruto blushed. Well, Nanami-san and the others have always been kind to me whenever I did D-ranks for them. I would finish early and they would invite me to tea and biscuits. Whenever I take breaks from higher ranking missions using D-ranks, I would always make sure that I do a few tasks for them. They had taken care of me many times before and spending an hour or two with them isn't that hard. Naruto said with a soft tone which made the others smile and shake their heads. Despite everything else, Naruto was still had his kind and gentle side. Kashina and Minato smiled sadly as they listened to their son speak of others caring for him when they couldn't have done so. Well, since you're in a wheelchair at the moment, you'll fit right in with them. Teased Sasuke and the others chuckled, snickered while Naruto huffed. Just because my legs are a bit devil at the moment, it does not mean that I'm old and would fit in as you put it, Sasuke. Naruto retorted and the group laughed again, the Namikaze couple just chuckled awkwardly. When they reached the Namikaze manor, they all saw Nariko who was with Ino and Sakura which made Shikamaru and Sasuke groan. Nariko eyed her brother before huffing and entering the gates with the two girls right behind her. The whole group didn't even bat an eyelash and just proceeded to enter. After reaching the living room, Orochimaru and Tsunade had went up ahead to start the machines first before hooking them up on Naruto. Minato, Kashina, Gai, Ibiki had gone up with the two senens as well. So dearest brother, how does it feel to be home? Nariko inquired as she sneered at Naruto who rolled his eyes. Correction, this isn't my home, honorable daughter. Secondly, being alive after a mission outside Konoha, facing dangerous nens, fighting them, and surviving, I feel very blessed. Though I can't say the same thing for an amalus such as yourself. I highly doubt you'd last an hour outside the walls with you being the dead last of your batch. Naruto taunted back. Anko couldn't help but laugh at what Naruto said. The rest who understood what Naruto had called Nariko had laughed as well. Only Nariko and Ino were in the dark is what Naruto meant by that one word he had used. What did you just call me? Nariko hissed but Naruto smirked. Chill out Namikaze, I know you didn't even understand what the word I called you was so you can't really get mad, now can you? And take that supercilious look off your face. You have neither skill nor talent to back it up so stop pretending to be something you're not. We both know your brain doesn't even have the cells to rub together. Naruto told her which caused Anko and the other to laugh, snicker once more. Uruka had chosen to remain silent and not say anything but he was trying to hold back his own laughter. Sakura who knew the meaning of the names Naruto called Nariko bit her own tongue to not laugh at her friend while Ino remained confused. However, before Nariko could even say anything, the rest of the adults returned. Ibiki lifted Naruto this time and they all climbed the stairs to Naruto's attic bedroom, library. The Genins plus Anko and Uruka occupied the Kotatsu while the rest were surrounding Naruto's bed as Orochimaru and Tsunade hooked the machines on Naruto. The boy in question had sighed for a moment before looking up and smirking. He turned to look at Nariko who was by the door of the room. Oh, just to remind you, honorable daughter, lest you wish for your whole arm to be fried, it would be in your best interest to refrain from attempting to destroy my possessions then leaving evidence lying about. Naruto said as all eyes turned to Nariko who looked red with embarrassment and anger. Ibiki looked up and saw the kanai that was lodged on the ceiling. He turned to Anko who nodded and stood up to use Ibiki's ready hands and lifted her to pull out the kanai and handed it to the Hokage who was in disbelief for a moment before looking angrily at her daughter. Nariko, you and I will be having a long talk later after dinner. Best be ready to explain to me and you better not lie. I will know if you do. Minato warned Nariko who paled. She had never seen her father angry before, let alone angry at her. Nariko turned to look at her mother only to see that she too was angry and disappointed at her as well. Nariko swallowed and nodded before proceeding to leave the room. Do not leave the house. You will stay in your room until we call you for dinner. Do not even attempt to escape. I will be very disappointed if you do. Minato added before he turned to look at Tsunade who had hooked the last wires of sorts that monitors Naruto's heart and pulse rate. Yes, disciplining Nariko would just be one of the changes they needed to do. 
Noriko who had staggered back down to the second floor, had paled even more. She was in trouble and if she even thought of escaping, she would probably be punished harsher than she imagined. When she had attempted to destroy Naruto's belongings and got burnt for it, she didn't think it would make her situation worse than it already was. But apparently, her situation could and had gotten worse. As his daughter left his office with tears in her eyes, Minato had never thought such a day would ever come to be when he would reprimand his daughter for her actions. The mere fact that she had attempted to destroy Naruto's things just because she disliked her own brother was just too much. Despite being young, Naruto had never caused his sister trouble and had been the very quiet one. Minato leaned back on his chair and sighed deeply. Now that he had time, he ran back through all the memories that could have positively given him clues to what his son was doing, like the time his son graduated from the academy but he didn't notice. Not really. He remembered reading through the file that one time and got distracted. Then it dawned onto him. Kashina had barged into his office just as he was about to go over the list of graduates. Then the Sandame had come in and Minato had asked him if he could create the team cells while he and Kashina ran to the hospital when she had told him that Noriko had fallen down after a training exercise that was done at the academy. Minato literally slapped himself for even thinking of blaming the fact that he didn't know about it on someone else. He proceeded to think about what happened six months later and how Naruto managed to become Chunin. Minato remembered that he had called the Sandame to his office because they had to discuss the Fire Lord's request for the Sandame to visit him and who were to escort the old man to the palace. He recalled that he had called in the lone Chunin who had passed along with a few others but he had been far too distracted with the fact that Noriko had painted the Hokage Mountain that very moment. He had not been looking at who he was giving the jacket with total concentration then and just congratulated him and tossed him the jacket before jumping out the window to chase his wayward daughter. Minato sighed deeply once more and stopped himself from thinking about the how Naruto got to Junin. He didn't even want to imagine how he would appear to the Fire Lord if it got out that, as Hokage, Minato had failed in his duties and had been irresponsible both as a leader and a father, having placed a prophecy before the betterment of the village and his family. Before he could dive into deeper despair, he heard a knock on the door and Kashina came in. Noriko's still crying in her room as I finished helping Naruto for bed. She said and Minato couldn't do anything else but sigh. It cannot be helped, Kashina. The fact that she attempted to destroy her own brother's things just because she wasn't pleased isn't right. I know that we haven't disciplined her strictly but I did not think she would have done such a thing. Despite how distant they are, they are still siblings. Surely that would have meant something right? Minato tried to come up with an answer but he knew that even his wife knew that he was just denying what was in front of him. How could he not do so? After so many years of training her, it seemed that it wasn't enough. All the things that they had taught Noriko, why was it that it didn't seem to appear at all? She seemed to have understood what they were teaching her and her taijutsu had a little bit better than most of her classmates, she was still average at best. It had pained Minato to have known that her daughter was the dead last of her batch. Again, Naruto's words came back to haunt him. And all those times, you and your wife were doting on your daughter who would never amount to anything because she knows nothing and passing the academy was a mere fluke. She's the dead last of her batch while I topped mine. Naruto's voice reminded him which made Minato wince. It pained Minato that his son saw him no more than just his Hokage. By the gods, Naruto was his son yet they were like strangers and shinobi Hokage at best. You dare stoop so low as to use your position to stop me? Well, I shouldn't be surprised since that's the only thing you are to me. You are my Hokage and nothing more. Naruto's taunt came back clearer and more painful than how it had been given that night Minato had to order his own son to stay and not leave them. Memories of when Kashina had asked if Naruto would choose the others over his family. The answer had nearly killed Minato and he knew it had stabbed Kashina as well. Family? We are no such thing. And he is my Hokage. I would not dare disobey his order. That very moment, Minato hated his clear memory of how things had gone from bad to the absolute worse. Minato, we have one chance. It pains me so that we had to beg our son for it but I also know that had the others not been there, he would have outright refused and no one could blame him. Kashina spoke with a cracking tone that hinted Minato that she was about to cry once more. Had you been there, you would have seen how he looked at me, Minato, like I was a disease that should never be left to exist. Had Shizun not been there in the room with me, 
I highly doubt Naruto would have even spoke to me in a civil manner. I can imagine if he would never have spoken to me at all. Kashina continued but tears were running down her face now. We've done him so much wrong that I am amazed that he had not seek vengeance against us for neglecting him all these years. If I had been in his place, I would have done such. But he didn't. He strived to achieve everything he has now and it's slapping me in the face every waking day that he had done so much and yet I know nothing of them until recently. I'm his mother yet I had been unfair to my son. My baby boy. I don't deserve to be called a mother and now I fully understand the looks I get when I head to the marketplace. She said as she looked up at Minato who looked confused. I didn't think about it at all. They all had been respectful but I knew in sense how they looked at me behind my back. Whenever I was out and with Noriko, how they watched with disgust and pity at me, it was all because of my inability of being a mother to my son. How could I have forgotten that I gave birth to two children? She cried out and Minato looked just as guilty as his wife. In some sense, it was his fault as well. Had he not singled out his daughter, none of this would have happened. He wouldn't have lost his son and the probably the right, gifted child. There was no denying it. Naruto was skilled, intelligent, and his achievements alone gave so much proof against Minato's claim that Noriko was the child of the prophecy. But as this is already here, we cannot also just leave Noriko and focus our attention on Naruto. He gave us one chance and there are so much that could go wrong. Should we lose that chance, we might lose our daughter as well. Kashina, we have to thread carefully. This isn't about the prophesy anymore, not really. This should be about gaining back our son and having our family together. Minato told her. Kashina had to slowly swallow what she had just been told. Of course many things could go wrong before their Khan could really forgive them. Kashina doubted that Naruto could really forgive them but she still hoped. Minato was also right that they could not ignore Noriko while making it up to Naruto. If all their trying failed, not only would they lose their son but Noriko as well. Kashina sighed. I don't care of that damn prophecy anymore, Minato. It is the very reason why our family got broken in the first place. Child foretold or not, Naruto is our son with or without your summons elder's words of warning. Kashina said as she hardened her tone and stood up. He is home, for now. I do not want to imagine what the future would be if we failed. I will not let it happen and you shouldn't either. You have much more to work for than I since you are two things to him, his father and his Hokage. I am not blaming you Minato but should you fail and drag me along, I will walk out of this house in your life. And you will never see me or Noriko ever again. Kashina warned Minato before she left his office. Minato sat there, a chill running up and down his spine as soon his wife finished threatening him. He knew she was right and that he had more to make up for than her. And that being said, Minato had to think of a plan of how to even approach his son. Like Kashina said, prophecy or no, Naruto was his son. And he'd do just about everything to bring his family whole. It had been only a week since he had returned to the Namikaze household. His friends had been there every day in between their D ranks and training. Sasuke complained about how irritating Sakura still was and how even more useless Noriko had become after the revelation of Naruto's true strength. Shikamaru had sighed and shared how Ino wouldn't stop talking about Naruto and how shocked she still was that he wasn't the same person she had been led to believe. Choji, according to Shikamaru, was glad for everything Naruto had achieved, which made Naruto feel pleased. Shino shrugged and briefly shared how Kiba had changed from the annoying genin he was to now. Whatever Kurinai and Sume had done to the boy, it worked. And Neji had little to no complaints, except for how Rock Lee kept challenging him whenever the opportunity came. Tsunade and Orochimaru had come during lunch as well to check on Naruto's adjustment. Shizune had busied herself with helping make Naruto's lunch with Kashina. Uruka mostly spent his lunch breaks with Naruto and everyone else. He had been tasked by Anko and Ibiki to bring Naruto a bottle of the apple juice the blonde enjoyed since they had work to do and couldn't join them for lunch. Yugo was out on a mission still and Kakashi had been called to the Anbu HQ more frequently than before. You're healing better than you were in the hospital, Naruto-kun. Keep it up and you'll be able to move around before the month is over. Just remember, no, Orochimaru stopped as Naruto interrupted. Using of chakra no key leakage, and absolutely no sudden and strenuous exercise. I know, Maru Jai san Naruto sighed deeply in forced acceptance while the rest chuckled. Just making sure. 
The man said with an amused smirk on his face before turning to Tsunade and both nodded and said their goodbyes to head back to the hospital. Kashina then came with Minato and Shizun behind her, bringing trays of foods for Naruto and everyone else. Maruka had instantly stood up and took the tray from the Hokage. They all settled down around the table while the couple sat on Naruto's bed and fed him. Tsunade Bachan told us you were healing quicker, Naruto. I'm glad. Kashina said as she placed Naruto's tray before him and he bowed a bit before taking his fork and spoon. It had been awkward and Naruto had been contemplating on whether or not he really could forgive them to an extent. The chance he had given them had actually been because of everyone else being there and he couldn't just shut them out. Naruto was still wary of them and his instincts warned him that there was something they weren't tell him. Yes, they seemed to want to make up for the years of neglect but nothing and absolutely nothing could ever make him forgive or just forget so easily. He had suffered mentally and emotionally and that had scarred him for life. The couple tried their best to converse with Naruto and the others. They mentally took notes when they hear something about their son that they didn't know about. It still pained them of course that they had to learn it from others but there was no other way. Also, much to Kashina and Minato's disappointment, Nariko had taken to having lunch and most of the day with Sakura and Ino. Their daughter had been more stubborn and nothing they said made the girl give an ounce of effort to be with them and her own brother. Later that night, Kashina brought Nariko to Minato's office. If you're going to lecture me about Naruto, don't bother. Nariko said as she fumed and crossed her arms. Nariko, why are you being so stubborn about spending time with Naruto? He is your twin brother. Kashina said but Nariko didn't budge. The same brother that have not remembered at all? That brother? Nariko jabbed and knew it was too low, even for her. Minato and Kashina looked angry. And why do you think we forgot? Who was it that demanded most, if not all our time? Who was it that seemed to want to be showered with so much attention? Kashina retaliated without thinking. So it's my fault now? Great. I wasn't the parent that chose one over the other. You could have said no to me. Said no? You must be kidding. Whenever we tried to say no, you would throw a fit and would outright cry as if you were hit when we never had done so. Kashina came back. Don't blame me because you lose a son due to your parenting skills. Nariko forgot herself and Minato had enough. That is enough. Nariko you are grounded. Until I say so, you will not leave this house except for D-rank missions and nothing more. You will remain here and I will cut off your allowance. You have grown spoiled but enough is enough. You forget that we are your parents and have given you everything you could ever ask for. Minato roared and both women turned to look at him with fear. Minato was usually calm but even the most patient of saints had their breaking point. Nariko stomped out of the office and slammed the door behind her, leaving her parents feeling whatever they felt that moment. She had never been yelled at by them but she just did and was even grounded and her allowance was cut off. She hated Naruto more than ever and wished he didn't exist. This is all your fault, she yelled when she got to Naruto's room. Naruto was reading when she stormed him and he raised a brow. What did I do now? As you can see, I'm currently confined to my bed and haven't left it since I came here. What could I possibly have done from here? He asked her with a sarcastic tone dripping from every word. If it weren't for you and your achievements, none of this would have happened, she told him angrily. Hey, you can't blame me for achieving all that I have now. You should blame your father for poking his nose into my business. I had been able to work well without him knowing until the day he demanded to see my files. It wasn't my fault that he was slapped with the harsh truth that he didn't have an ounce of knowledge of what I have been doing. You have helped really. Your constant nagging and hassling him during his work hours managed to distract him long enough to not pay attention to what he was signing and stamping. Naruto told her with a smug look on his face. Did you know that had he not known about my Junin status, I would have been able to leave this house and he wouldn't have any idea until it's too late? Yes, had he not done anything to disrupt the flow of events, none of us would be in this position. You would have remained their favorite and only child while I live my life the way I wish it. By then, if they even notice, I would be old enough that they won't have power over me anymore. But until I turn 16, I am trapped here. Naruto added and Nariko swallowed everything she was being told, despite her reluctance. I have a question though, we both know that you were trained even before we started the academy. But why is it that the training hasn't shown itself at all? You're still the dead last. Why? Naruto inquired which made Nariko red with embarrassment and fury. 
It was no secret that she was trained but Naruto was right. She was the dead last and the training her dad and mom gave her didn't seem to have stuck to her. No answer? Well, you don't really have to give one. With your half-sized brain, the only things you would be able to comprehend are shopping, gossiping, and stocking Sasuke. By the way, you have zero chance with him. He doesn't like you and won't ever give you the time of day even if your father ordered him to. Hell, Hayuga Hinata has better chances than you, Ms. SPD, and Ms. Mind Invader. Naruto taunted and that just snapped Nariko and she lunged forward only to be trapped in mind air. Did you really think that I am defenseless? This entire room is sealed that should my person be attacked, the assailant would be frozen in their place until I release them. Remember the cake incident a few years ago? Think of it like that but longer freezing time. Naruto explained as Nariko was in wide eye fright to be trapped there until he released her. And much to her already building worry, her parents came in and saw her. What is going on here? Minato yelled and Naruto just gave him a blank stare. She came and blamed me for causing you to ignore her and how I had apparently changed everything for her. In her fit of rage, she thought about harming me and thus she is frozen the way she is now. My room is sealed that should I be attacked in my sleep, the attempt will not happen as the aggressor would be caught the way she did. Naruto said as he did a one hand seal and Nariko dropped on the solid floor with a huff. Kashina looked livid as she grabbed her daughter. It seems that you really aren't ready to be a kunoichi. Had you been ready, you would not have done this. I am putting you now on indefinite suspension and I will be personally reviewing you to see if you really are cut out to be a shinobi of this village. Attacking a superior, incapacitated or not, outside of sparring sessions, is in capital offense. And had you not been my daughter, I will have you sent to T and I for punishment. Minato spoke with a grave tone that had Nariko swallowed hard. Be grateful for the leniency because it will not happen again. He added before he grabbed Nariko's arm and took off her Hitai 8 before walking out the room. Kashina then bid Naruto a good night and dragged Nariko out the room. I am very disappointed in you, Nariko. You're our daughter, you ought to have known better. Have we not taught you anything? Have you disregarded your father's position in this village? Kashina said as she opened the door to Nariko's room and placed her daughter inside, before closing it and sealing it to make sure Nariko didn't attempt to escape. Meanwhile, Naruto was smirking and chuckling to himself at the situation that his sister managed to get herself into. She really was stupid to have done what she did. Did it not occur to her that he was a Junin and she was a new Genin? But then again, she never really showed any intelligence so this really shouldn't have surprised Naruto. Not at all. Have patience with all things, but chiefly have patience with yourself. Do not lose courage in considering your own imperfections but instantly set about remedying them. Every day begin the task anew. Tilda St. Francis de Sales. I am a line, ignore me. A week after Nariko's suspension, Minato had brought Nariko with him to work to keep an eye on her. She was to stay within his view and remain quiet. She could read a book or learn a jutsu if she wanted but that was all up to her. During the day, Kashina would spend her time with Naruto, asking questions about what else he enjoyed doing, didn't like to eat, and about his sealing skills. She had shared that the art of sealing had always been an Uzumaki tradition and she had told Naruto how proud she was that it showed so strong on him. Naruto, in all honesty, had not expected to feel that giving the Namikaze couple a chance would bear fruit. Well, at least with the wife that is. Namikaze Kashina had been patient and very absorbent whenever he answered her inquiries. She was very soft-spoken and did her best to accommodate her daily chores and give time for Naruto without burning out. The only worst thing about sealing is that one wrong mistake when it came to storage type sealings is when too much chakra is used in reverse sealing happenings. Kashina said and Naruto agreed. He remembered a time last year when he had taught Sasuke and Shino how to create their own storage scrolls. Both had gotten sucked into their scrolls and Neji, Shikamaru, and Naruto had laughed about for days. Kashina began to teach Naruto a few seals only the Uzumaki loan knew off. That decision alone paved way for her own relationship with her son to further move forward from where it was. Another week had passed and Naruto was cleared by his healers and given permission to move about. He still wasn't allowed to do strenuous activities or use large amounts of ki and chakra but Naruto was just glad that he could move about now. During the day, Naruto and Kashina continued their sealing lessons until lunch where Minato and Nariko returned home to eat with them. 
One day as Naruto was on his way down for lunch, he ran into Noriko and smirked. Honorable daughter, did you know that after a bit of research, you're the only shinobi in history to be suspended whilst still a genin? Most shinobis who garner suspension are high chunins to anbu operatives, never a genin. Congratulations, you're the first in the history of Konoha, and probably the five countries to be so. He taunted her as he passed by, which made her so angry but knew better than to yell and harm Naruto. Lunch had been stiffening as it was still awkward for all of them to pretend that everything was alright. Well, Minato wished he could pretend while Kashina was trying her best to make it all work out. Naruto didn't really care but he remained quiet while Noriko released all her frustration in silence. After lunch, Naruto and Kashina would return to their lessons until 3 in the afternoon. Naruto would then excuse himself and head over to the small tea shop Nanami-san and the other old ladies liked to stay and have tea every afternoon. The old ladies were glad to see Naruto well and walking about again, even if he was not to work and continue his ninja duties. They would listen to him share about the places he had seen and in return, they would tell him stories about their younger days and the places that they had been to as well. After an hour later, Naruto would stop by the academy and help Aruka with the children who had welcomed him back happily as they had missed their Naruto sensei. By 5 o'clock, Naruto would head to the local bar where most of the chunins and junins stayed to relax and chat with the others who greeted him and welcomed him back to the land of the living and the walking. Most of the junins had teased Naruto about being trapped in bed and tell him how Kakashi and Asuma had wished they could have gotten the same kind of paid vacation as he did and just stay in bed. Asuma didn't know Naruto very well but both had gotten along after a few rounds of shogi where Naruto had won 3 games out of 5 against the Sarutobi Junin. By 6, either Kakashi, Yugo, Uruka, Ibiki, or Anko would escort Naruto home for the evening and arrive just in time for dinner where the pretending would begin once more. Kashina had gotten more and more accustomed to what Naruto didn't like and what he did. Most of what Naruto liked, Kashina had come to realize, were the very things Noriko disliked. Kashina had begun to compromise every time she cooked. Half of it was dishes Noriko liked and the other half were dishes Naruto liked. She also had to make sure that the dishes that she made were the ones that both Naruto and Minato had to avoid eating. As much as she and Noriko enjoyed seafood, she had to be careful as not to send her husband and son to the hospital due to food allergies. During the evening, Minato and Naruto would spend a few hours in Minato's study while Kashina tried to question her daughter of her hatred against Naruto. In truth, Kashina couldn't see why Noriko hated Naruto to begin with. She knocked and entered her daughter's room that one evening. Noriko was reading something on her bed and she sighed. Noriko, I think we need to have a talk. We just want to know what it is about your brother that you hate so much. Kashina said as she closed the door behind her. Noriko sighed as she sat up and looked out the window. Ever since you guys started to pay him attention, you've been crying then. Daddy's different as well. He never gets mad at me and never punished me before. But since Naruto came into the picture, both of you don't even have time for me anymore. It's boring in daddy's office and to think that he suspended me from being a ninja. Noriko cried out with so much frustration. Kashina sighed. She ought to have seen this coming. Noriko, you have to understand. Your daddy and I love you very much. But Naruto is also our son. We have come to realize that what we have been doing all this time is wrong and as parents, we are trying to correct our mistakes. Naruto is your brother and as far as I know, he hasn't done anything to you. Kashina told Noriko who huffed. Nothing when you and daddy are around. Of course he'd behave when you're both there. He's trying to make me look bad. Noriko defended herself. Just like how you tried to make Naruto look bad by saying all those mean things about him and how he was a dropout when he actually had graduated. Kashina inquired and Noriko instantly closed her mouth. Noriko knew that her words back then could come back to bite her butt but she didn't know it would be this soon. She huffed and crossed her arms. How was I supposed to know he graduated? He never was around and always locked himself up in his room. Not even you and daddy knew if he was around or not. You both always forgot about him, she pointed out which started to annoy Kashina. That is why we are trying to correct our mistakes, Noriko. We have indeed neglected you brother and it has come to pass that Minato and I are to sow the fruit of our actions. But Naruto had been gracious enough to give us one more chance. One chance to be a big family, like how we were supposed to be. 
Kashina explained as best as she could but it was clear on her daughter's face that Noriko would never see Naruto as her brother. The gap between them was like worlds apart and nothing could ever bring them together. The warning Orochimaru had given them from the snake elders came back to Kashina's mind and worry began to eat her once more. If Naruto was indeed the child of the damn prophecy Minato and Jiraiya had been told by the Toad Elders, then the world of the Great Five Countries would soon hang in a balance. No matter how hard he tried, the guilt he was feeling would never truly disappear. Minato knew this as he went about his day within his office. He looked down at the photos that decorated his table. Kashina, the twins and himself when they were still babies, Kashina and the twins sleeping peacefully and Minato holding the twins with a wide smile on his face. However, as he stood up, he looked about the other photos that were behind him and he felt worse once more when they were all Kashina, himself, and Noriko. No Naruto. Minato knew there was no one else to blame but himself as it was his fault for being too self-reliant on prophecies. Now, his decisions many years ago had come back to bite him hard. The world, as he knew it, was hanging in a balance as he had yet to even gain his son's favor. He knew of course that his wife was doing a better job as Kashina didn't have to leave the house every day. Minato had to admit it, even if only to himself, that he wouldn't be as favored as Kashina since he wasn't there as much as his wife was. Which brought him to his sudden idea. Aruka san please cancel everything I have for the whole weekend. I will be going home for lunch and will return on Monday. He said and didn't even wait for the Chunin to say anything else before flashing out the office. Uruka sighed as he rubbed his temple in annoyance. Just because the man was Hokage didn't mean he could skive off work. The scarred man just shook his head and went to push back all the Hokages scheduled to next week as it was already clear that the man wasn't going to be working the whole weekend. I am a line, ignore me. Naruto was reading a book in his room as his mother had gone out to shop for dinner. They had an early lunch so the woman could do her tasks and return home early and spend an hour or two with him before having to prepare for dinner. He was still confined to his bed but it was getting better as the days went by. It had been three weeks since he had been returned to the Hokage's manor and both his medics, Tsunade and Orochimaru, had been pleased with his progress. With not using his chakra and having plenty of rest, they had told him that he was healing faster than he did when he was staying at the hospital. Naruto had snorted then and explained that staying there would have made recovering longer as it reminded him that he needed medical help due to his last mission that could have been his last. He was lost in his thoughts that he almost didn't hear the Yandaimi knock on his door. Naruto looked up from the book he had in his hands and blinked. Yes? Minato shifted on the spot and sighed. I came by to see how you are doing today. I took the weekend off as well. I thought, why not use it to stay at home from time to time? It isn't like the end of the world, right? He tried to joke to ease the tension. The man didn't know how to act around his own son as he and his wife had missed a lot of years thanks to their stupidity in believing that pouring their attention to the one that needed them most would be understandable since they thought that Noriko was the prophecy child. Orochimaru's findings that it wasn't Noriko but Naruto, it had made all those years of neglect look like intentional and now useless. Add the fact that during said years, Naruto was higher in rank than Noriko, had more skill than her, more intelligent, and had the respect and admiration of his fellow shinobi as well. Minato didn't like to compare but it couldn't be helped since there was so much difference between the two that it was practically a sin to mistake Noriko for Naruto. I am doing well, thank you. Orochimaru-sama and Tsunade Bachan are doing everything they can to get me back on my feet. Naruto had told the man that he once thought as his father. Yes, he had given them a chance but he wasn't going to place all hope on it because he could already feel that they would fail for some odd reason and that would be the end of it. He didn't normally give second chances to people who did him wrong on the level the Namikaze couple had done but he had been pressured then so he sucked it up and swallowed hard. I'm glad to hear that. You had done well protecting Ibiki and Genma. To have held off your enemies alone and at a young age, it takes skill, talent, and experience to have done it so well that you all return alive. Minato praised Naruto and got a nod as a silent thank you. Was there anything else you needed? Naruto asked politely but with a tone that spoke of indifference. I was wondering, you know, if you don't mind that is, we could talk for a bit? You could tell me what you've been doing with Ibiki and the others. Kashina mentioned that you both talk when she comes and spends time with you. Minato answered, hoping and praying that his son would agree. 
Naruto looked at the man, assessing him for what seemed like a long time, but was merely seconds in reality, before he nodded. I don't mind, it's not like I have anywhere to be at the moment. Naruto replied, knowing well that he was trying just like his wife. Minato looked relieved and went into the room. He pulled out the chair and sat next to his son's bed. So, what do you do at the T&I? &I? I know it was on your file but I wasn't able to read it all. It was kind of thick and my attention span isn't really that long. Minato asked as he chuckled in embarrassment and scratched the back of his head. Naruto rolled his eyes as he shook his head. Well, normally, Anko started the initial interrogation. She tries to get them to loosen up and gather as much information as she can before they either clam up or die from whatever injury they already had before being captured or from Anko. If they survive, then either Ibiki and I go next. Usually it's Ibiki who goes and I remain watching and note all information that he gathers. The few times I get to work instead of him. Naruto trails off a bit and shrugs. Minato moves forward, listening in silent anticipation of what his son was going to say next. Well, when I do get to work, I don't even have to really touch them like Anko does. I'm more like Ibiki. I use whatever information Anko had gathered and I continue from there. I'm into mind games and puzzles. Ibiki had taught me ways to gather information without having to even come into physical contact with the target. Just his appearance, habits, and even known history and abilities are enough to be used as weapons against them. Naruto said as he sighed. Minato leaned back and blinked like an owl. One Ibiki was scary enough for Konoha but the man was training his son to be mini Ibiki? With a dash of Anko? He couldn't help but wonder how long Konoha would remain standing if it were to happen. Can, can you show me? How you work? Minato asked hesitantly. Naruto turned to study him, a brow raised. Are you sure? It would not end well since you and I have, more information between us than normal prisoners. Naruto informed him. Inside, of course, Naruto wouldn't want to miss a free chance at hitting the Yandaimi where it would hurt but if the man was asking for it, who is Naruto to say no? Minato nodded as he swallowed hard. Naruto sighed and sat up straighter, silently analyzing the man before him. Namikaze Minato, Konoha's Yandaimi Hokage, also known as Konoha no Kiroi Senko, was placed under Jiraiya of the Sanin's team. Met your wife, Uzumaki Kashina, at a very young age when she had moved to Konoha just before the destruction of Whirlpool Country. Your best technique would be your Rasengan, which took three years to make, and your version of the Flying Thunder God technique, that came the Naidem Hokage, Senju Toborama. Jiraiya had once mentioned that you were one shrewd person, not one to do anything without reason. When you had gotten a team, which was then named Team Minato, you had tried to do good by your team. You were given Hitaki Kakashi, son of Hitaki Sakumo, Konoha's White Fang, Uchiha Obito, and Nohara Ren. Naruto began and Minato had already swallowed hard, especially at the mention of a few names. Of course, everything had been going well even if you had to fight off many of Kakashi's attackers that were due to what his father was supposedly had done. None really had the decency to remember that Konoha valued teamwork above all else and that to abandon your teammate in their time of need would put you on the same level as trash. But despite that, Team Minato flourished, until the Battle of Kanabi Bridge where you had transferred the mission to the newly turned Junin, Kakashi. Of course, that particular mission had gone south which led to the death of Uchiha Obito and Kakashi gaining one of the eyes of the late Uchiha. He continued and Minato paled as he was reminded of that mission. The morning had been long, both you and Kakashi had blamed yourselves for the death of Obito. And not too long after, Nohara Rin too had died in the hand of Kakashi. One after another, Team Minato began to lose its members until all that was left were two. Fast forward a few years later, you had married by then and were expecting children of your own. When Uzumaki Kashina had given birth to twins, a boy and a girl, you had been very pleased. However, what people didn't know was what kind of a father you truly are. Naruto's voice turned cold and Minato now regretted allowing Naruto to try and show his skills alone. The great Yandaimi Hokage was not as great as he appeared in public of course. He had favored one child over the other, to the point that the other child had been all but forgotten. Both you and your wife had poured everything you had onto the one child that had not shown an ounce of ability despite the years of training and private teaching. While this was happening, the forgotten child had excelled, made a name for himself and even had risen to through the ranks. 
What the public also didn't know was that the Hokage himself had no idea that his own son had done so. That his son had carved a name for himself, nearly surpassing the once great name of Namikaze Minato. Naruto turned harsh and narrowed his eyes at Minato had tears running down his eyes. Naruto did not spare him any mercy and began tearing into him for anything and everything. And he had given him the permission to do so. So, tell me, Hokage-sama, why does a man such as yourself, who prided himself with undying loyalty to his family and friends, abandon his own flesh and blood for the other child? Why did you favor one over the other? How could you have cared for others when you couldn't even care for your own? Naruto asked, his eyes bearing holes into the Hokage who was so pale and was sweating. Had it been someone else, Minato was sure that he wouldn't have reacted the way he did. But the one asking him and dissecting him was his own son who he had neglect, abandoned and had nearly forgotten. I, I, the prophecy, he then realized what he had said and his eyes widened in horror as Naruto glared harder into him. What prophecy? Naruto asked again, his voice cold and scarily calm. I, the prophecy? Jiraiya sensei said, they said. Minato was trying to speak, trying to think of how to even explain. What prophecy, Hokage-sama? What kind of prophecy would have made you do a despicable thing as to abandon your own child? Naruto's voice was getting more colder and sharper. Minato was torn in between. He knew he shouldn't say it because he had been told that the prophecy he thought meant Nariko was not fully correct that the prophecy that had guided him blindly all these years could have, and possibly truly meant Naruto, was the reason that he and Kashina had favored Nariko over Naruto. You owe me, father. You own me an acceptable reason as to why my childhood was full of misery and abandonment from people that was supposed to be my family. Naruto pointed out angrily, and the last finally broke Minato and he cried. The prophecy of the toads, that spoke of a child, born to our family that would bring, who would bring about never before seen power, that would bring a new age to this world. We thought, we thought it was Nariko, so we did everything we could to train her, but now, he trailed off as he sobbed. Naruto didn't look impressed, in fact, he looked livid. So, a so-called prophecy was the reason for my misery from you. A prophecy that could have meant something else entirely. A prophecy that you are saying now, may not even be about that fucking dead last. Naruto retaliated. Minato got to his knees and tried to hold on to Naruto's hands. I'm so sorry, so sorry, he tried to apologize but he knew it wasn't going to work as Naruto pulled away from the man. You disgust me, a wise man like you are said to be, should have known better than to believe in such a thing as a prophecy. I hope that you realize just how stupid you had been now that you see what your actions concerning this prophecy had resulted to. Naruto closed off and looked cold and blank. Minato tried to grab hold of Naruto who kept pulling him off. No, no, please, Naruto. I'm so sorry. I'm really so sorry, he said as he cried. Consider your one chance gone, Hokage-sama. Enjoy the results of your so-called prophecy. Naruto told him as he pushed the man off him and flared his chakra to call for his chosen family as he knew there was always someone nearby. That's all for now if you enjoy then please like share and do comments.